five. Sick. Grabbing the link here and pasting it in the channel. We are so in. Some people file in. Okay, welcome. I'm gonna mute that. Pull up this. Pull up this. All right, and we're chilling. We're chilling. Welcome, Fennec. How does the audio sound? Are we balanced? You know how to pop out chat? Oh, there it is. Pop out chat. Perfect. That's how. <laughs> Click the pop out chat button. I just have it on another monitor where I have the, the stream health as well. I'm the stream doctor. The structor, if you will. It's not that. It's not the structor. No. Nobody okay. calls it that. I call it that. As in, I have called it that exactly, what, well, maybe two or three times by now, but... I think it was only two times. I'm not convinced. Structure, A little structure, quiet, structure, okay. Structure. Who's quiet? Everyone, or me, or Nahaima, or the music? The music's supposed to be quiet. On a list of things we could have figured out prior to 6 p.m. sharp, this is not one of them because we started at exactly 6 p.m. sharp. Yeah, we didn't really have time. We, we wanted to get the stream out on time, so mm -hmm. we yeah. left some things for until we're live. Quality control had to take a little dip. Yeah. Okay, this is Nahima. So I'm, I'm quiet. All right, you want to turn me up on your Discord? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm just going gonna, gonna to turn it up on OBS. Yeah. It is also my mic. I am... Maybe this is going to help. I don't know. Um, yeah, you, you sound I, fine on Discord to me, so I think okay. it's just OBS has you low. Yeah, my headset is currently trashed, so I'm using my, my girlfriend's backup mic right now until I get mine back. Alright, it should be okay now. Cool. Does everyone agree that that is okay? I agree. I also can't hear it, so... <laughs> embarrassing okay sounds good all right cool uh so we got five people in here right now i'm thinking we can at least start the preface a little bit here yeah so what do we got cooking today so today we are going through the truant division we're going to be giving some roster reviews um just a little rundown ahead of time so, so today it's just us two uh for the next two It'll be us and the mods for each of the remaining divisions. It just works out that for this one. The mod is here with me, so Yo. it's just Yeah, us. so I'm pretty sure everybody knows me by now, but I am also the, uh, the head mod for Truant Division. Um, so Toadie's going to chime in every here and then with some of his own thoughts as well, but um, I've got a bunch cooked up for... What I think about your teams, I think there's a lot of sauce. Um, there is some people maybe overcooked a little. Um, but whenever you're ready, I guess we can just start from the top. Yep, we can get going. I'm just going to wait like another minute or so just to... Yeah, cool. Well, we got the screen up here. Um, I also want to say that I scored my because we're doing like kind of out of 10 just off the cuff the idea is these out of 10 ratings were before we had any discussion about these they're just kind of like what's our first glance looking at this team so we're bound to have missed some synergies too or maybe we misinterpreted yeah, 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 something um 
And so, so anything can change. We're going to give the number to start and then we'll have a little discussion about it and see if we change our minds at all. Um, Obviously, we haven't seen most of these teams in action yet, <laughs> and, and any team can be played by you know a good enough player. Right? Like it's, it, there's nothing that yep. says that any of these teams would not be able to win games. There's a yep, rant. we've seen DJ Barrara pop off with Mono Reggie. I mean, yep. <laughs> we know he's a good player, and I'm pretty sure did he make playoffs or just miss playoffs when he had that? That team, he did not make playoffs, but but he okay. has made playoffs with with like other funny with teams. funny teams yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so these rankings don't incorporate any of the games that have been played i think there's a couple truant games that have been played but we're not looking at any of the results or yeah. any of the ways that people have been playing the team it's mostly just um specifically looking at the team there are some cases where um like people have they're kind of notorious for drafting the way that they draft and that can impact the at least my rankings yeah but never like it's not going to be anything based on what's happening this season right so that's just the the heads up uh if you hear yours and you get a a low number to start um you can still you can still salvage it you can tell us why we're wrong or yeah. you can make some free agency trades while we're still early in the season um, so there's, there's a lot that can still be done. Um, yeah. but yeah, no, mine, I literally just wrote mine up. Uh, a lot of them are <laughs> not very thought out. So, uh, no offense <laughs> to anyone. I mean, you guys know me, you've seen my takes in the chat. Uh, I will adamantly defend some of the, uh, more questionable takes. So, and yeah. I, I will do the same here. So <laughs> if someone can rant so hard about Amber Palm and, uh, and what's no, that stupid Grafii and Wigglytuff? See, those, those, are, those ones don't count because I'm actually right about those ones. I'm talking <laughs> okay. more about the ones that I'm We can't wrong prove about. you wrong on those, but we can argue your ratings for the teams. Right. Okay, that's good to know. Though. All right, so, okay, we're up to seven. Let's uh, let's start going through. So, yeah. um, what do you want? Um, so we got... Uh, we can. Do you want to look at the the rosters from the whole screen, or do you want to go through each of the the tabs? Because I have both set up to be able to. Yeah, do let's go through the tabs. So we okay. have just in the in the drafting order. Um, yep, exactly. So starting out with Reject Engineer, um, also known as Sumanth on the Discord. I'm not sure which they prefer. I haven't heard um, which is which, but but yeah, um, they first picked Mega Mawile. Um, what do you think about Mega Mawile in recent seasons? I mean, I I think that I mean I think it's a good first pick. I mean, eighteen pointer is definitely good. Um, I've never been huge myself on on like the on that style of of wall breaker, um, but I know that it can be really good. I I also warn that in some cases it, it is kind of hard to use sometimes um, just to position it well and really understand what your what your matchups are and like where to fit it in and where to swap it in um but i know that like dj red lantern my friend um ran i think in his first or second or it was it was my first nat deck season so his second uh he had it on his team and i just remember it did so much and like right now yeah. i would do like skirmishes with him and stuff and, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and we and and just seeing what that mon can do if you get it in at the right time, especially positioning with that intimidate before you mega evolve. Um, yeah, I, so I, I, I do think, I think it's a solid pick. Yeah, I do think it does rely a lot on how well and how consistently your team can bring it in safely. Yeah. Um. So even if it's something like a like a teleport, like a, if it's a slow twin or a Porygon two or a, a maybe not Clefable. I Clefable's probably fine. Could be. Yeah. I do think I will say that. I think it's a mistake to count Mega Mawile as everything that it says on its tin. Where it says that it's a rocker. It says that it's a steel type. It says yeah. that it's a fan type. It says that it has priority. And I think those attributes to Mega Mawile are... I don't want to say fake because they are real. And they it can fill like one or two of those roles every game. But um, I often see Mega Mawile drafted as the only steel and the only fairy. Which I yeah. think is a mistake. And something that I really like about this roster, there's a second fairy and there's a second steel, and they're both Terra captains. So if you want, if you're in a matchup where like Hatterene really pops off for some reason, like Combine Hatterene goes in more than Mega Mawile does, Mawile you can maybe don't run like full spadef, but you can run it in a more defensive manner to allow Hatterene to not have to be 
the main fairy anymore so that it can be free to Terra and you don't just lose to the Spex Latios on the other side of the team anymore. Right? Yeah, I, I, I noticed the same thing um, about about having the, the second fairy and steel type. I actually, I didn't notice, like I wasn't even looking, I didn't notice that they were the Terra Captains. That also is nice too because you do get that flexibility. Yeah, I think um, that's really cute. But I agree with what you're saying where, where it's, it's not that it's not a steel and fairy type, it's that it's not like the steel and fairy type for your team like you can you can yeah. acknowledge that that part of it is good for certain matchups but you don't want to rely on it in the entire roster as your mon that fills those roles in certain matchups it's yeah. just that it, it it's is a nice like bonus counting, it, when you need it <laughs> so. it's kind of like counting mew as a defogger right where it yeah. can defog very well but it's not priced at 20 points to be your defogger right yeah um, something else oh, that we, we to do the have before we started talking about this. But the <laughs> numbers? Oh, I was gonna say numbers at the end. Oh, I, I wanted to do it at, at the at the beginning because it, it's because our thoughts before we have the discussion. Oh, okay. And then maybe we and then we see how change that changes it. after. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. So it's I like actually a gut reaction at first. Yeah. So okay, actually, what did you what did you say about the team? So at I time? I said a seven for this one. Interesting. I have it at six actually. Okay. But I do think that. Um, and I mentioned this to you a little bit earlier as well. I do think that I am being, I don't want to say hypercritical, but I, I do think that lowering the average of my, my team ratings will help differentiate who, like which teams are actually closer to the top rather than having like five teams that are all nine out of 10. It'll be mm -hmm. lowering that down. You'll have maybe two teams at nine out of 10 and two of the nines are now eight out of 10 and stuff like that. Yeah. I think I only um, have. So it's nines. just a difference in kind of how I'll be during this season. So rather than having an average of about seven, I'm, I'm trying to have my average about six or five. Yeah. That's Probably six. But there can be failing teams, which I do think um, I do think is good. I think having having a system where teams can fail will sometimes light a fire under somebody's butt who were like, hey, team isn't really great. Here's maybe how you can fix it. Maybe take a look for yourself. And it would be a point of improvement and reflection too. So, so yeah, I have it at, at six out of ten. Um, probably a little bit lower than you. I think for myself, because I've looked at full trick room teams before. Not that this is necessarily full trick room. There are tr options outside of trick room, which I think salvages a little, salvages the score a little bit for me. Um, looking at full or semi trick room in draft, I've just never really been impressed. Yeah, and I think that Mawile, Hatterene, Ursaluna, Stakataka, like if you're not bringing Trick Room, these mons are losing some of the value that you probably drafted them for. Um, and you're only really not bringing Trick Room if you want like Keldeo and Regieleki and maybe Mandibuzz to be able to be faster than things. Um, and it also just turns off Dragon Dance Gouging Fire too, which I feel like is um, can be a problem. So definitely not reliant on Trick Room, and I like that. Um, outside of Trick Room, though, Reggie Lucky is kind of fake speed and will bring up the the average speed, kind of just like how Gibble maybe brings down the speed in yeah. a fake kind of way and brings down the stats. I think Alecki's, if you count Alecki as just fast enough, you know, um, then it won't impact your speed. Just like Deoxys speed kind of thing. It's like the actual number doesn't matter. It's just yeah. faster than everything. You you think of you think of Alecki. Yeah, and a lot of kids, especially in draft where where you're not gonna be doing like the high power sets as much. Um, I really just think of it kind of as a prankster without priority. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's exactly. Like exactly. It and like, yeah, it'll yeah, it'll do what it wants to do first, screener. and then that's it. <laughs> yeah, it's a prankster screener. It'll have like maybe a fast explosion or or rapid yeah. spin or something. Um, I also think something that's gone under the radar about Reggie Alecki is the nerf to Transistor that happened last generation. Because um, it used to be plus 50%, right? Mm -hmm. Just like Dragon's Mob, but isn't it, I think it's like 20% now, they nerfed it into the ground. Yeah. Um, and I think that's something that, it's... even in matchups where Alecki is really good, where let's just say they don't have a ground type and don't bring ground Terra for some reason into the Alecki, um, I don't think it's as oppressive as as people kind of thought. I think in. it still can be like it. It I the thing when you have a type like electric where the answer to it is taking zero damage instead of just resisting it in most cases. 
it doesn't really matter how much it's doing when your answer for it is something that's not going to take damage. Like, like I know there yeah. are cases where it does matter. Obviously, like there, there are roles that are different now. In the same way that that the grassy glide nerf means that there are roles that are different for Rillaboom. But at the same time, it's like you're you're. If you are open to getting Specs Volt switched on for the entire game, you're gonna take a lot of damage either way. The, yeah, the nerf yeah, the nerf matters for some for some one v ones or for some certain situations for sure. Um, but in general, like if you're vulnerable to 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 like a Specs Regilecki set, you're vulnerable to a Specs Regilecki set regardless of transistor. And I think the fact that it uh, you know wasn't allowed in i think i got it got banned from ou pretty quick once terra was i mean once once it got out of gen 9 just showing that like the combination you don't need transistor to be an absolute demon with terra ice deleting any ground types and then just being able to like specs volt switch around because when you're faster than everything you don't need to necessarily get that one hit ko unless you're down to your last mon like you just yeah. need to be able to get the volt switch off and get out and then maybe yeah, come and back end in games, so. yeah and end games will just boil down to the aleki end game yeah which yeah if it was a terra cap then that would be right well obviously, I mean, obviously it's, it's, it's banned, not so. fair legal here yeah something else i think we haven't mentioned is there's just five points remaining on the team <laughs> i didn't even notice that yeah <laughs> um it doesn't really seem like it too, because it has some really high tier. It yeah, it, it almost. I guess I it's think really, it's really the, the gibble. It's like the gibble could be I think, a six yeah, pointer. Yeah, seeing instead. the gibble not at the bottom kind of tricks your brain into thinking that it's more filled out across yeah. the board. Um, I I don't know. I I remember draft was happening. It got to their last pick. We pinged them, and they said, um, "Do we have to use all of the points?" Nope. You don't have to. A couple people were kind of like, listen, dude, there's no reason not to. Yeah, you might as well. You? And they're like, no, <laughs> it's okay. I'll pass. I don't want to. Okay. <laughs> okay, man. I'm not going to tell you how to draft. It's totally fine yeah. to to not, but it almost feels like you're just shooting yourself in the foot. No yeah, because you still have to use... It's not like you get a free transaction after. It's like you still have to use a transaction to turn this one-point gibble into... Even if you decide to keep these ones the same and you say, hey, let's get a six-pointer instead, that's now a free agent. Yeah. As opposed to just being like, you could have just picked a six-pointer and yeah, made exactly. that into and anything I, you want. <laughs> like, yeah, and I don't think there were any grace trades for the team either. Yeah. Um, so. Something else I'll say, though, is that despite the kind of negatives we've mentioned before, I do think that um, Ursa Blood Moon and Gouging Fire, in or out of Trick Room, can just single-handedly yeah. win games. That's why, that's why I have it at a seven. Like, that, yeah, that's there, why I there's put a up lot there. of... <laughs> Like the offense profile here, where you have such a, a devastating physical breaker, a devastating special breaker, and then really good cleaners as well, with like Dragon Dance, Gouging Fire, and yeah. Trick Room, like OTR, or Staka. Um, or just Calm Mind Ursa. Yeah, or Calm Mind Ursa, even like Specs Ursa, CM yeah. Keldeo, Scarf Keldeo, whatever. Like there are good options to just close out games. I'd just mm -hmm. be a little bit worried about getting to the point where you can close it out. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I, and I, not and making it so that the trick room doesn't doesn't whiff and doesn't end up hurting you with the gouging fire. I was I was gonna say where where I I agree that like the the points that I take off for it is because of of you know it, it could be overly reliant on trick room or maybe a little one dimensional. Yep. And I think I think that even though gouging fire has you know dragon dance set up, Bursa has calm mind set up. There's a lot of setup that you can do with this team. I also but I also think that like with the power level of the rest of the team outside of like Keldeo who also likes to run choice stuff a lot like it might end up being a little too reliant on the one button sets for a couple of these mons like not it's not that each of the mons have to do that but you might see matchups where it's like oh banded gouging fire kills this but specs bursa kills this and Mawile can come in here in this in this one scenario once with Intimidate and click this. Like there might like on paper ahead of time it might look fine, like as like you have a lot of options here, but you don't really know until you see a lot of the matchups that you might end up with some of those some of those like just close enough calcs that when when your mons are all kind of breakers, but you're not but you don't have a reliable way to get things into that range where the breaker is threatening. Especially yeah, against exactly. like regen cores or against like anything else that can like come in and shrug it off, which there's a lot of in that decks. 
Um, yeah. Those are the things where I would hesitate and and say like, you know, it might be fine, but it also might not be. Like, it really just depends on a lot yep. of these matchups. And and Agreed. personally, I'm not like I don't really like using mons like like gouging fire. Um, that's also like a bias that I have where it's just like I wouldn't want to have to build teams with this team just that's knowing right. what some of those things look like but I also don't think that makes it a bad team necessarily that's why I think it's still a seven because because like you said these mons just win games like if yep. somebody you don't even it doesn't even have to have, have to be like like a, a prep diff or something like you could just accidentally or like be greedy with something and like throw away the counter to one of these mons and you just lose on the spot yep if somebody accidentally <laughs> like, gets a KO with their like scarf electric type and then ursa comes in and gets the combine yeah. you might just win yeah right i do think though uh last point i think maybe before we move on because we've been talking about it for a while mm -hmm. the team's defense versus special defense is wildly oh, insane yeah. looking at the intimidate mawile looking at even hattering looking at ursa gouging fire stack attack mandibuzz it's so no. physically defensively oriented and i'm not too sure why i'm worried that in special or matchups where they have a strong special breaker or a strong special cleaner that your team might be overly reliant on assault bests and special defense investment like mandy might have to be spadef a lot of the time maybe av hattering or av ursa in a lot yeah, of matchups and things like that i don't know if that's i don't know if that's a super bad thing i think i think part of this might be like power creep brain almost like these are not bad special defense stats like this is not a bad spread to have like like hattering is 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 av sets on hattering are good like that's a mon that you can run av yeah in, like, you're not running trick games. room on that but. yeah like, like if you're not running trick room or call mine like like that's fine if you need to run av special defense uh uh mana buzz is also fine like you you're gonna yeah. kind of just passively wall a lot of physical types anyway and if you're really only worried about those physical ice type moves like investing in spedef is fine there too like like these are all like like there's yes they're i see what you mean that they're considerably lower than the defense overall but we're also talking about 211 defense 125 defense with intimidate 121 defense 125 these are high defense stats so, so i think i think it's like it's more like yeah good luck running physical against this team but also pretty average against special attack i wouldn't yeah, say that it's particularly that's weak against special attack I do think in a vacuum, though, like just looking at a team rating overall, I think you should still be able to say, hey, this team doesn't have like something that excels at this yeah. and kind of That's dock fair. a point there. That's fair. As opposed to other teams where they may have two things that excel at FizzDef and two things that excel at SpitF, and that's yeah. just a lot more flexible. You don't have to run the SpitF on those mons and stuff in those matchups. We don't need to. Yeah. But I, I think... um. I don't think my my rating changes too much after the discussion. I st I still think between six and seven is pretty fair. Yeah. Would you Would you change your seven? I, I might I might bring my seven actually down to the six because I didn't really think about the points thing too and like having basically only eight mons. Like that that does mm. kind of limit it a little bit. Um, yeah. And 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 uh, eight mons and a lot of them are newer gen mons. So like you have you have uh, Mega Mawile, Keldeo, Mandibuzz and stack stack attack basically are like the only ones that are pre-gen 8 and gen 8 is where the move purging started to happen yeah, so yeah. You're, you're like more limited on on some of these mods where like a, a comparable one might have just a couple extra options that it kept from gen 1 or like you know right. like like having that toxic that everyone has yeah up to gen toxic, 8. knock and, off and, the defog the yeah. pursuit and stuff yeah right and that's like this might be a crazier team in Pal decks, but yeah. in in Nat decks, you they might find that some other teams have a little more flexibility building against you than you do building against them, and that's compounded by the fact that this team has eight Pokemon versus everyone else's pretty much minimum of nine. <laughs> so yeah, fair. So it, just, it think, might be hard um, to build with, like in that sense. Yeah, I do think we wrap up this team yeah I th this is also reject engineers first draft if i'm not mistaken and i do think that all things considered it's honestly a pretty good draft i think it yeah. shows that they they even though they're new to draft they're not completely new to mons they understand what's good and the strengths of the mons that they have and i'm excited to see them play so nice. yeah good team man all right optus storm child let's go ahead to our numbers um 
this is one that I didn't really look at too closely because I actually I did <laughs> see the game that was played already. Um, but also, like, I think it, it's a 10 in my heart, but... Uh, There's some serious cooking going on. I think, yeah, objectively speaking, you probably don't want to run this team as a person. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, you know what? It, it's probably fun, you know? Definitely <laughs> a, a 9 or 10 out of 10 yeah. for, for the vibes and for the gimmick of yeah. quadruple weather. It's hard to prep uh, for, you know. We'll get you that. It, is, <laughs> like it does pull prep in a lot of different ways. I'd yeah. say probably a four or five out of ten, looking at the whole team. Actually, um, in, a, in a funny way, it makes it like a lot of common anti-weather strats just don't work because if you are, if you're trying to like set up anti-weather, like set up like you're like a different weather to like kind of shut down. Say it's like a rain team, and you bring your sun, like you bring something to set sun reliably, even if it's not like a like a torkoal or something like maybe it's a prankster sunny day um yep that doesn't really work when the next mon that comes in sets a different weather for a different mon like you're not going to have those opportunities or maybe the thing that's like built to tank a water hit in the sun that they set they don't tank the the sand rush excadrill you know? yeah i do think that running not that i would necessarily do this but running like a prankster sunny day let's just say against this team when rain is up it does still kind of mess with the program, you know. Yeah. And I think it's I think it's going to be a pain in the ass for Stormtide to um to make sure that the right weather is up at the right time. Yeah. Especially um if you're trying to get value out of Walking Wake, having Zard Y. First of all, you have to have rocks off the field for Zard Y to even come in and set set sun right. reliably in the first yeah, place. Yeah, it does make it a little harder to keep doing. And that. obviously, the fact that it can't run a uh, heat rock. Mm -hmm. means that walking wake is gonna probably have to be a little bit more self-sufficient maybe just run specs or something more often than not and not rely on mm -hmm. the sun boost for protosynthesis i would have maybe liked to have seen a chlorophyll user um maybe not over walking wake i do think wake is decent on the team and i also like that wake is more than serviceable in rain as well and i yeah. think that's the most important thing is that the wake is serviceable in two weathers I would say probably the same as Kilowattril, um, yeah. where Kilowattril is kind of the flex mon, where just being a fast mon with Weather Ball is actually very strong. Yeah, and it's you just run like a terror if captain. it's <laughs> ice. Yeah, it's honestly it's kind of like a third terror captain. That's right. Just having the ice Weather Ball, the rock Weather Ball, the fire, the water. Those are all actually really good for Kilowattril, and I expect yeah. to see it coming to at least half the games probably probably i'd say six closer to seven or eight out of the eight games in the regular yeah. season i think we'll see it one, um, one i do think that, though is the hurricane like tr like running hurricane yeah you don't want to click hurricane the sun. <laughs> yeah. yeah so it's it's risky running hurricane um when you have zard y on the team because then if you bring out zard y it dies before you go into kill the watcher you pretty much have to go into polytoad first rain, yeah. right which is i think the, kind of the problem that I was getting at where if you start to lose momentum and your mons start dying you need to either make use of the current weather that you have up now before you're never able to set it again um, or you you just say well I guess um, I guess walking wake is out in the snow this time not a big mm -hmm. deal which realistically it isn't a big deal um, it's not losing but anything. It's, there, there's a lot of ways that things can go poorly right especially because you can only bring six mons too yeah. Uh, um, Lethal Blue said Hisuian Lilligant would go hard. Does does Hisuian Lilligant get rapid spin? I don't know why I think that it does. No, it doesn't. It, doesn't it might have that. defog. Okay. But I'm not sure. I do think that Toad Scroll is. I mean, you take what you can get for spinners when yeah. you have Zard Y. That's what I was wondering. If, if Lilligant had like spin, going... that would actually be kind of good yeah. to replace Toad Scroll if, it, if the points worked out somehow. Yeah, I feel like going with this team, though, like with this gimmick, and then being like. Well, I need something to let me actually play the game. It's kind of a cop out. <laughs> Just commit to it. Yeah, Toad Scroll, the third ground type on the team too. <laughs> yeah. Not that this team's weak to ice in any capacity, but having a having a ground. True. I don't think that's type. a big deal. Yeah. I will say that. Um, Freeze dry, maybe. <laughs> I do think that the Terra Captains also only totaling. 10 points is pretty rough yeah i know that most of the mons on this team that are weather abusers are actually terra banned yeah um obviously zard can't terra because it's a mega 
I would have liked to have probably seen Kilowattrel over something. I do think Arctivish is, like, fine. I think Arctivish Arctivish is good for the lower tier one. Yeah, but the... You don't need... Your lower tier right now is Quillfish. Yeah. You know? I don't think you need to cheap out pretty much with with the Slush Rusher. Sorry, with the other Terra, just because it's a Slush Rusher. Like, Terra Killo is actually kind of interesting because then you can actually dictate, like, what type it has regardless of weather. And then that kind of becomes your avatar more than cast form. Which, yeah. by the way, cast form is really cute, but, like... <laughs> It's it has to be it's not coming. Though. It is never coming. If I see it come to a battle, I will be impressed, and I will give you a crisp high five when I see you in real life. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it, I don't expect to see it coming. I don't think the random points necessarily thought. would have gone towards an upgrade or anything, but surely there's something that maybe Toad Scroll could upgrade into. That how much is a better did, captain? Did Gigalith get drafted? Um, I'm not sure. Let me check. Because I wonder if, if it didn't, maybe swapping out Hippo for Gigalith, because that's a point it did discount. Not. Yep. That's a point discount. It gets, you know, it's, it's a it's a rock type that you don't have, so it gives you that instead of another ground type. And then yep. maybe you take those points, trade Toad Scroll, and, and turn that into something else. Like maybe that Hisuian Lilligan or something. But, I mean, yeah, you're losing your hazards, but also, I mean, your hazard control, but like, when are you removing hazards on this team? When are you, you bringing code scroll? Yeah, everything that you do takes two turns. Like you don't have time to go in and and go and spin something away either. Um, oh, he no, that... switched Gigalith into Hippowdon. Oh, really? I wonder Apparently. why. That's, that's sweet to say. Um, I kind of agree. I tend to like. Obviously, Excadrill is like the main sand abuser that you want yeah. on any sand team or team with sand, rather. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always personally would rather go with Tyranitar or Gigalith. Yeah, just because of the you know I mean gives you more rock and ground are very similar, um, type wise, and it's not really oh, yeah, the end of the true. world. The, uh, but not the having the extra ice hazard weakness, control too. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. It's just it's just I like I don't know. think you need to double up, and then tripling up with Toad Scroll I think is is tough too. Yeah, I don't know. I like that Drill doesn't have to be the electric resist, which is nice. There's Bolt Absorb, Kilowattrel, and there's Hippowdon. Yeah, but then also, which like, is very nice. but that actually makes it worse, though, because now you have Kilowattrel. It's also, like, the thing that running Hippo with Excadrill is usually good for is, like, you know, being the one that can come in on the electric threat and not yeah. have to risk Excadrill. It's like, well, you have a different one that can do it. <laughs> like, you have multiple yeah. options here. <laughs> it's, like, the worst possible scenario for having the the excadrill hippo, hippo combo instead of either of the other sand setters yeah i do think overall there's a lot of actually hard hitters and i do think that quillfish is sui is i don't want to say slept on but i do think it's um being a terra captain it'll definitely put in more value than six points says that yeah. it will yeah i mean it's uh, definitely tiered for being a defensive yeah I do Evil think that intimidate. Hippo, Hippo and Politoed are going to be, like, the defensive backbone on the, of the team. And neither of them, like, they're both really big. Momentum sucks. Not that there's too many pivots, honestly. Like, okay, there's, what, Flip Turn Wake, Bolt Switch, U-Turn Killo, and that's it, right? Maybe Baton Pass, Ninetales you count, but there's not really any pivots, so you're going to have to be hard switching into Politoed and Hippo pretty often. Yeah. Which means that maybe your your snow has to go down more than you would like, and then Arctivish isn't as consistent. Yeah. Or um, then the the type of the weather ball that you wanted Kilowattrel to use isn't the right type for this certain scenario and stuff. I I just I think there's a lot of ways that it gets messy because there's a lack of like synergy and a lack of pivots um, that could potentially mess with your plan more than the opponent really cares about what your plan is you know yeah that makes sense. yeah i don't know um so and that might also any... be a reason to keep the hippo over the gigalith too just because you know yeah. gigalith it can it's, it's, more it's a fine yeah. defensive mon but, but hippo is definitely a, a more consistent defensive mon yeah maybe i would have liked to see more setup options to be able to close the game out yeah. before it gets to the point where you're losing weathers 
like Quillfish, Excadrill, and if you want to count Ninetales. But I would say Quillfish and Excadrill are kind of the only setup that the team has, which is actually pretty surprising. And Wake can Dragon Dance. Okay, Wake can Dragon Dance. Zard can Dragon Dance, too. We're not counting those. Yeah. I, I, I think I think Dragon Dance Wake is, is a fine thing to consider, at least. But, I mean, Zard isn't going to. Yeah. I mean, it's fine. Especially in, in like, with Protosynthesis, like... I, I don't think the lower attack set really matters as much for Wake. Like, obviously, it's not hitting as hard, but it's definitely an option. Should have drafted Golduck for no weather. True, Corey. Anyway, so yeah, I don't think my, my <laughs> just rating... The weather. I don't think my rating changes too much. No, I no, still I think it's kind of maybe a four... Maybe I was being generous with the four, um, just because I think it's cool. I think there's a lot, of, a lot of problems, but I also think you kind of drafted it just to be funny and have problems yeah. and i think that's totally fine man the the team is really cool i'm really excited to watch you i think it's gonna i'm gonna have a blast i'm sure you're gonna have a blast it looks like a really fun team i'm glad you drafted it it's just from a um an objective perspective where i'm actually putting metrics to measuring the team i don't think it's going to it doesn't have the makings that will allow it to perform as much as the others do yeah yeah i, 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 I don't think anybody's gonna serious rating that. is is yeah kind of pointless like yeah. like Nine we know we know team, why it's like this it, it's funny so. yeah great team um i don't expect it to win the season if you made playoffs <laughs> with it i mean hell anything can happen but uh, i don't i don't think I, it's I possible to make playoffs with it that's for sure like i, I think yeah i think any one of these teams gonna make playoffs yeah for sure i just don't i wouldn't put my money on it is what i'm saying yeah i, I wouldn't favor it anyway let's um move on to our that's third sweet. team we have it up next we have mt105 or sweets um as they may be betterly known as um so any I, first what are your first thoughts what do you what do you have i put it as an eight and and that might be a partial bias because because i've used some of these mons before like I, obviously i like clefable a lot um okay. i've used corbin obviously like corbin is one of those those defensive mons that doesn't really get worse in draft it's just kind of like kind of denies the, the like what what a lot of people expect for some of the more one-dimensional like oh this is the physical defense mon that comes in on this thing like Corvette yeah, yeah, yeah. just manages a lot better than than some of those other mons that get worse in draft um i what i said i, I put like a i put like a sentence for each of these so i said i said might be a little too top heavy defensively so what did i say so obviously wop is not defensive latios is more offensive uh generally um but I think it was that the yeah all the defensive checks are like up here I guess I don't know or maybe maybe it was that like some of the no because that's not even true because melodic's down here I don't know why I said that I think it's more just because like the the some of the strongest breaking power outside of these two being the you know what they are like Latios can do so many things like I, I'm not really concerned with Latios if I'm if I'm talking like this um, but. You know, if your big breaker power is down here, you might just end up having to run some of these guys more for for certain offense offensive checks, like some of these guys. Um, but then might not have room if you need these guys for other stuff. Yeah, so, that's fair. So, and Latios is great for a lot of things. Um, but usually I feel like you would run it on a team that's a little more scared of ground type. And you have Arcanine is... But outside of Arcanine, it's like, uh, unless you're running defensive Latios in a lot of sets, I feel like it doesn't get as many of those free openings as it would against a team that's like, oh, here's the time that, like, the ground type is coming in to hit something. Because, mm. like, it's not even like a ground type resists Flare Blitz. So it's like, you're not, you're not like, always summoning the ground type in. Um, in Thunder, oh, I see. Okay, so, to ground. so just to be clear, you're saying that, like, in matchups where... Let's say you have the Reggie Lucky that we just talked about. Um, yeah. If you have the Reggie Lucky, you are more able to make consistent switches to Latios, expecting the ground to come in. Like you make double plays, kind of thing, more reliably. Is that what you're saying? Sort of. Or more like, more like, if you're facing a ground type, you can very confidently like assume that they're gonna click a ground type move. Like there's a lot of mods that they want to click a ground type move on. And, and sometimes when the only drawback is like maybe the Latios comes in, then you might end up with some more of those like like 
mind game situations that kind of favor you. Um, oh, okay. So but because... on this team, there aren't that many mons that like draw that out. Like like yeah. Thundy, like as your electric type, isn't gonna draw out an Earth Power, or you know, like and Corv as the Steel type yeah. isn't gonna draw out an Earthquake. Like it, like that, you're not having those things that one of the, like some of those things that make Latios really good, which is that it's a it's well, it's a dragon that resists the things that like flying types would normally. Uh, wanna, what am I saying? Um, like it's a, a, like an electric type that's going to be fishing for a ground swap, right? If you have your option, let's use like Sandy Shocks as an example, or or anything else with with uh, with ground type, and then like a and a, like a Volt Switch, like a Treads or something. Um, because I, I've done that a couple times too, where it's like I have good situations where I can either click my ground type move or I can click my my pivot that is going to hit your flying type that's coming in on the ground type move. Um, Latios is nice on like some of those rain teams where it's like you might have that Volt Switcher that could also do something else that that a Levitate Mon's good for and you're still resisting that electric. Or in the cases of, yeah, like a, like a, a ground type coming in on that Aleki or coming in on that um, just any other electric type that wants to send out that electric move. Um, you now... Like, I, if I am fighting this team, I might not see that as like a, a worst case scenario Latios comes in if I click Earthquake. Otherwise, this is a good move to click. I'm looking at this team and saying, wow, there are like three mons that could come in and make this Earthquake useless and put me in a really bad position. I'm not going to build my team around banking on getting that Earthquake in because I know that I have to check three boxes before I can click it as opposed to, hey, maybe we get rid of the Latios early and then and that's why I'm running this Banded Earthquake. You know, I just uh, I think I think it loses some of the value as as with the levitate and like having those opportunities to come in on more offensive sets without taking damage because you're not baiting out the immunities as much. Okay. So you might be more inclined so to let me wrap set. my head. Sorry. I'm not going to lie. I, know, I, I went like, I went all, all I went all I have no idea that. what you're saying. I'm not yeah. going to lie. Okay. Wait. So you're <laughs> I saying, I like changed because, my mind halfway through what I was saying. <laughs> because you're saying, or, or sorry, you're saying that because there are other ground immunities, Latios is bad. It's not that it's bad. I'm saying that it's you that might it's, it's need to invest. Not points worth. Not even not getting 17 points worth. It's okay, just it's so not what... getting this. You might have to run slightly. You might be more inclined when you're building this Latios to run it defensively because you're afraid of something. Whereas a lot of times when Latios can be good, it's running full offense, but you know you're going to have a lot of opportunities to come in on an immunity. Because it's kind of like what we talked about before, where it's like an immunity, you're not taking damage. It doesn't matter what item they're using how whether their ability got nerfed or not you're taking zero 100 percent of the time you don't need defensive stats to take zero percent from yeah. from an earthquake and i, I mean, just think I... that there are less open opportunities to click earthquake when you're building as the person building against this team that latios might not have as many free opportunities to get a to get a frailer set in to just click those buttons. It's not saying that you can't ever swap it in because you certainly can. There's definitely going to be times where you can come in and take a hit and it's fine. But you're not going to have as many free times to get in when you don't have as many, you know, chances for somebody to be bringing like a like a banded earthquake or, or bringing like a lot of ground moves because you look at your team that's really weak to ground in general. It's one of the reasons why Latios pairs really well with Archaladon, who is only weak to ground and fighting and Latios just comes in on ground and fighting pretty much for free in a lot of cases and so that's okay. a really good opportunity for it to come in and just click a button you're not I getting those opportunities think... when when your team's not weak to those things you're not you're not bringing banded fighting types or or like choice uh, choice fighting types or choice ground types against Corviknight, Clefable, Thundee and so Latios isn't getting those same opportunities to come in. You might be more inclined to bait out that ice coverage move because maybe Thundee comes in. Maybe Latios comes in. At worst, Corviknight comes in, and what's Corviknight doing to me? You know, like, it's, that's that's kind of what I'm trying to get at. But, like, okay, I think we're kind of losing sight of what the focus is here. So so let's get let's try and get back on track. <laughs> I, I will say one... <laughs> one counter to this before i think we just move up like i i understand what you're saying but i think you could also say that the same is true for arcanine where there are so many things that can come in on the ground type moves why would they ever click the ground type move i can stay in with my arcanine right 
Like, I, I don't think it's Oh, it's yeah. As... No, no, no. Yeah, I agree. I think that's... Okay. I, I'm just saying that when the only payoff is the 13-point mon, it's... it's it just okay, but it's sort a thirteen point mon that unbalances what, it a little bit. Oko's whatever's in front of it. Yeah, I don't True. think it's like yeah. as big a deal. And I no, I, I don't actually. We talked about it so much. Here. I don't think it's a big deal at all. I still said it was. Yeah, eight. okay. <laughs> like, I, I was just trying to. I was trying to describe <laughs> yeah. my thought process because I didn't describe it well at first, and now it seems like okay. I'm like ripping into this Latios being That's on the okay. team That's when okay. it was really just a minor point. Like, oh, it might not be able to come in as much as it would get like on a team. And, and really, if I had thought of our Chaladon sooner as like the example that I was thinking of, like what's the why am I thinking of rain teams? Why are rain teams good with Latios? Oh, it's because our Chaladon and and it comes in on our Chaladon's counters. And that's what All that's right. really what I was thinking. Anyway, about, so. I think we're kind of caught yapping here. So yeah. so you said the team is eight out of ten, right? Yeah. Okay, I actually put the team slightly higher at eight and a half out of ten, eight point five. Um. I think you were saying that the you didn't like kind of the the top heaviness of the defensive core with like that's Gorf, the Clef, that's the Island. note that I wrote, but then I looked at it again and I don't even think it's true because a lot of so I here and I can I understand know. that sentiment though because something that I um, something that I picked up on is how electric weak the team is um, just looking at the core right so so looking at specifically core of Milo. Clef has to be the electric immune unless you're bringing Rhyperior. Well, and Rhyperior is not something least. you want to bring. Yeah, okay, it resists it, but are you like if you're bringing it in on Thunderbolts every time, yeah. then it has to risk being paralyzed, as well as um, then you're not blocking the bolt switches. So I was most right about my Latios point. Thank you. Now see that it all comes full circle. <laughs> okay. I don't think this is anything to do with your Latios point. <laughs> this is a you're Rhyperior Latios point. can't come in on this mod, so I was right. <laughs> Yeah. No, I, I agree. Yeah. Okay, it, this is more a Rhyperior point, where the the ground type is not... I wouldn't say it's up to snuff with the the quality of ground type that the defensive core would want it to have. Mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with being Earthquake immune. Just to make that clear, because I think that so, was most of your point with Latios, right? So, Air Balloon, Rhyperior... You're saying that'd be oh, a good. All right, no more yapping. Um, something that I do like about Rhyperior, though, especially as a Terra Captain, is that it can remain an electric immune regardless of what type it is through Lightning Rod. Oh, that is true. Which I think is actually very nice for its flexibility. I don't really think about that. You don't need to worry about it not being the ground type anymore because whenever you need it to be the ground type, it will always be effectively the ground type through Lightning Rod. Yeah, or at least the threat of it against, if you like, don't know if it's Solid Rock yet. Yeah, except against like specifically Mega Ampharos that can mold break you. But <laughs> I don't, I don't think there's many other. Uh, Did anyone draft? I do Mega think Ampharos? that I don't think anybody's drafted it for a long time. Then we're probably um, good. so that's kind of my like main drawback. Other than it's mostly just an eight mon roster. But honestly, bringing Rhyperior is not that big of a problem. Like yeah. you're probably going to be bringing one of Rhyperior and or Arcanine every yeah. game, and then. Probably two of, too. That, like, yeah, gives it more points probably two <laughs> of Lop, Latios, and Thundi every game, or two of the, the main three defensive core. Like, depending on the matchup, you can either sub out an offensive mon or sub out a defensive mon if yeah. you want more access to Stealth Rock, for example, and you want to run Rhyperior Arcanine for, for whatever reason. I don't know what that would be, but like, whatever matchup, right? Um, I also think that um, Arcanine is often just seen as the choice band, head smash, reckless, or sorry, not reckless, um, rockhead, Rocket. just kind of kill shit, the opposite of whatever's in front Rocket. of me. I mean, they're yeah, of sorry, the opposite, yeah. But um, but it's actually, I think, I feel like Intimidate sets are actually pretty decent, just just being like Boots, Intimidate, That's true. Stealth Rock, just come in and uh, you can kind of simulate some of what regular Arcanine wants to do. Obviously, you're weaker to ground and weaker to rock, but Arcanine's <laughs> not staying in on those, or sorry, ground and water, but you're not staying in on those with base Arcanine anyways. So I think it actually does fill somewhat of the same role that base Arcanine does without the Will-O-Wisp, I guess. And between between Arcanine and, and Melodic too, and, and really Rhyperior as well before Terra, um, that's a lot of good fire protection for, for Corviknight as well. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Um... Bringing Arcanine into a fairy matchup, I think, is strong as well. Um, also, 
um, Milo, Corv, Thundy, or sorry, Milo, Corv, Clef are so um, flexible defensively. Mm -hmm. Like, they can be Fizz Def, they can be Spit Def. Like, Corv just has naturally high Fizz Def. The other two have naturally high Spit Def, where investing into the other just makes them all around good walls. Clef or they could be good. hyper Spit Def or hyper Fizz Def and, and have good options there. Plus, I like that all of them, maybe less so for Milo, but almost everything on the team has a good setup option. Yeah. You can be like a weakness policy, rock polish, Rhyperior with Terra, and that sounds crazy. Or, you know, like plot, Terra Blast, Thundy, which is obviously really good. CM Clef, Bulk Up or Iron Defense, Corv, multiple different setups on, on Latios, right? I yeah, think really, there, the there's a lot it of... The only doesn't is the, is the Lop. In yeah, the argument. Lop, and I, get, I wouldn't super I guess you don't count really do, the you Milotic. Don't do setup on Milotic, yeah. Yeah, Coil, Coil is real, but, like, not that real. You know, it's not real it's, enough that I would say it's a setup set. It's it's real in a, in a defensive snowball way, and less yeah. of a... You're not, like, you're not sweeping with that unless yeah. somebody, like, actually lost their answer. <laughs> yep. I also like the Cleric potential that Clef has on the team. I think... Yeah, um, Natex Clef is nice. Yeah, things like Corv and Milo and um, Latios really appreciate the not only witch passing but also the uh, the aromatherapy yeah. and dropping. Like so, for example, or if you do switch bell. in Latios, yeah, or sorry that um, <laughs> if you do switch in Latios on the Thunderbolt and get paralyzed, not that big. If you switch in Corv on the Skull to get burned, not that big a deal. Yeah, one downside: melodic if you're running Flame Orb, and That's you get not. A good you don't think? I don't know. I mean, I don't know about melodic, so I don't know. But that, that's like, I mean, that makes it pretty bulky defensively, though. Like, yeah. like defensively. Uh, I mean, honestly, at that point... I was just going to say, if you, if you cleanse therapy, the burn after it's knocked or something, then, I don't know, <laughs> it might suck. <laughs> I mean, if you're running aromatherapy, you might as well just run rest, Milo, instead of flame orb. And then just, and then wake it up. Yeah, and then wake it up. When it's off screen. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not yeah. might as well. And, and don't get me wrong, there are times where, where flame orb is necessary um if you're against like a hyper fizz def team and having that extra turn where you don't have to click recover um maybe maybe important i don't know it, it's very matchup dependent i personally am not a huge believer of flame orb but like it's it's fine it's a set there's i think the fact that there's an easy alternative with rest kind of makes it not as good in my books but yeah. that's okay uh, yeah, so I to kind of wrap things up, I love the team. I think there's a lot of really flexible defense. There's a flexible offense. There's so many setup options. There's a lot of bonk buttons. Honestly, even like Life Orb Clef, it's pretty hard. Specs I, Latios, I ran a couple one of, of the Life hardest hitters sets in my last yeah. draft. Specs Latios, Band, Arcanine. Um, honestly, even Milotic, if you end up getting a, um, a competitive boost, kind of can hit pretty hard with Scald Ice Beam. It has a, a really good special attack stat. Uh, I think it's kind of underrated offensively. Yeah. Muck, I I didn't think too much about Muck. I think Muck, just I there, think it like, can be yeah, underrated. I, three points. I think Muck. There's a I don't know, maybe it's different in Nat decks. Um, I mean it probably is, but Muck. There's a chance that Muck performs to be better than three points like like they're like yep. it's not guaranteed it's not like by default better than three points but there's a chance that there could be some games that people will be like man why is muck only three points <laughs> like you yeah. know it just sometimes wins games <laughs> yeah i do think last point i think that the even though the defensive mon stats are very flexible i do think that the like the bst of each of the defensive mons is a little low and so the team might struggle with like broad coverage, like a choice band or a choice specs like thing that hits a lot of things neutrally. Yeah. Um, or even just if it's like a specs ice beam, for example, and you have to bring in Milo every single time. Milo's yeah. going to start to get worn down really quickly. Milo's going to get frozen um, because you're going to be really reliant on the tight matchups over just having insanely high raw stats. Which is not inherently bad. It's just something to watch out for. So yeah. that's that's kind of why I think it's still an eight point five. We didn't really talk about Lop. Lop is insane. I Lop is so haven't good. really known what to think about Lop for this whole time because I'm kind of trying to think like, well, what does it do here? And I know that's like a flawed way to think about it because because it just does so much. I I never used it because why would I draft Lop when I have better Lop and Amber Palm? Amber Palm, um, true. But but uh, I think. Um, it, it, that's what I haven't really given very, it much thought. <laughs> it's a very good benefactor of the slow pivoting that the team has with 
with Korv, Clefable, and Milo. And honestly, even yeah. like Latios and Thundee can also pivot. Um, and Lob can just pivot out as well. So I think... I just kind of assume that it's like, okay, it's really fast and can yeah, seal a game. In certain <laughs> matchups, I think you can really put other teams through the blender. Yeah. Um, I think it, you might struggle to get up hazards, maybe. Clef kind of looks like the only thing you want to be consistently running rocks on. Maybe that's a flaw. Eh, yeah, that's my thought. I think it's a really good team. Pretty consistently. I think it's a little furry for my liking, but... <laughs> it's a good team. Yeah. Yeah, Lop's the only one. That's, that's furry. You don't think um, but it does, it, it, my Lodic and Arcanine are furry? No. Arcanine's too much of like a pet dog. Yeah. And Melodic's like not a furry at all. Anyway, let's move on to our <laughs> next team. Who do we got? Let's try to keep it a little shorter and yeah. cut the yapping, by the way. Yeah, we still got two more divisions to do tonight. Just kidding. No, we do not. <laughs> <laughs> this is why However, we put we're on three only, days. We're still going. We're not even long. a quarter of the way finished. So let's yeah. so let's try and let's try and uh, quicken it up. So we got All right, Itsuki let's Suki. Go on to Bobo. No. Wait, Itsuki Suki. Um, I gotta say, this is I think maybe the most resources we've ever seen Itsuki actually use. And we're still... And you still, still have <laughs> two extra points and an extra Terra point unused, which uh, is not the end of the and world. Terra points, your team I don't is think better. that's big of a deal if you're one no. point below. Sometimes it's no, if so. your team is better because you have, you know, you're only using 23 or 24 of your Terra points, it's not, not a problem. Yeah. Um, I will say But I will say the extra two points being used in order to get, like, or not being used in order to have Arbok on the team, I feel like is kind of maybe missing... Some value. I mean, no grounded poison type. That might have just been the, hey, it's on the team. <laughs> it exists. So don't, don't. Uh, eh, I guess it could. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I mean, you don't, you don't want it to be like somebody building against this team isn't gonna be like, oh, I can't run T spikes because of Sil Valley. Yeah, well, they're not gonna <laughs> say that about Arbok either. I think it has more of a subconscious <laughs> effect than Sil Valley does, though. <laughs> like, you, you, I still look at a team and say, is there a grounded poison type? Yes or no. I would not look at Sil Valley and say that. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it could. For Sil Valley, <laughs> I kind of look at it as like a 19th type that's just question mark type. Still like, you know how Curse, the move, has the question mark type? Yeah. I kind of just look at Sil Valley like that. Um, so the team is neat. I do think um, the Terra Captains are really good. I think yeah, that Raikou the, and Sinistra are very strong. Especially now that Raikou is in uh, Gen 9 and it has Terra Blast. Just like, yep. A really good terror cut now because I, yep, I remember i drafted I it last time and made it a cat and then i realized i was like wait this thing doesn't have terror blast and then i just switched yeah it. <laughs> oh before we go too much further what do you what do you I, give yeah I, I have my notes up here so i said i said and this one's one that i didn't really think about too much there's too many mons on it for me to give it too much thought <laughs> <laughs> i said i said six and my comment was i like the diversity in points because i like that they're spread out like i like i like these these teams that can just do a lot of different things um but nothing really stands out. And that's that's partly like I could be convinced otherwise if you tell me something on here is really, really good. But when I look at this immediately and I see that the high tiers are like Samurott, who is a really good Mon, but the reason he's 16 points is because of a signature move that he has that does one thing. It's not that the Mon does one thing. We had this discussion last time. Um, it's yep. not that the Mon does one thing, but the reason that it's 16 points is is in part due to that move so it still doesn't stand out as like this is the top tier mon on this team because it's yeah exactly because it, it does most things and win like, yeah most things that it does compared to the other 16 pointers is on average worse right like if, if you were to if you were to take away that signature move everything else it's maybe like a 14 point mon so it's still a solid offensive mon good typing all that but um but yeah, that's what makes it 16. And Salamence is another one where it's like, he's 16 because he can do two different things. He's not 16 because one of those things is worthy of 16, right? Like, like yep. if you're, com I, if I you're think comparing it's also, it to, it's just the flexibility that exists. Yeah, I think it's also one of the mons that falls prey to the Terra system, where having it Terra legal kind of inflates its price a little bit. Yeah. And then not having and it be a not captain. using it the captain, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I think it, it doesn't go, it doesn't bode well for your point total or your yeah. point like allocation rather which is a shame because like you said like these are two really good terror captains that worked out really well pricing wise because like i don't think i don't think a one point 
uh, not being used for terror captain like is basically doesn't make any difference whatsoever at all. Like you can have the best terror combo in the game and you might have a point left over just depending on like, yeah. how that worked out. So I, I, I think, think it's a really it's... good combo, but yeah, I agree that that is a is a sad side effect for Salamence then. Yeah, I also think like just given because I also think actually Raikou and Sinistra also kind of have the terror attacks a little bit. The what? So it's it's just kind of debatable whether you think Raikou plus Sinistra is a better Terra combo than like Salamence the Dunsparce yeah. or even Skeledurge plus the Dunsparce. Um, or if yeah. Dun the Dunsparce could have been a better eight or nine point captain or something down there. Yeah. Not sure. I, just, I, I think I think I think yes, you. I don't know. I feel I feel like. If I were doing, if I had this team and I and I had Salamence as one, I would be kicking myself that one of these two couldn't be a Terra Captain. Yeah. Like these are ones that you want to make work out as Terra Captains. Yeah. And so it's like maybe maybe the problem is that you don't draft Salamence on this team, right? Yeah. But I'm not saying that they need to change anything because it no, can still be but a like good Dragonite team like is this. there. Yeah. Dragonite is a point or two lower, pretty much because it can't Terra. Yeah. And I don't think it ne like does the exact same thing as Salamence. No, but I mean it's a less threatening. I do think that. But... Yeah, I do think that it's close enough that if you're not going to tear the Salamence, like Dragonite is there. Yeah. You know, you save a couple extra points, and then suddenly, instead of having two extra points, you have four extra points. You can upgrade the well, Arbok to a four point, yeah. or Fortress to a seven, or sorry, the Fortress to like a nine pointer. Yeah. And um, you know, it actually just makes the team better as a whole. Hold on, is the, is the fortress the hazard control? Or is it because I guess defog? Yeah, so that was something else I was going to mention. That's kind of unfortunate um, with your spike. Actually, boy. before I, before we go on to the, the cons, I have a couple other things that I thought. First of all, so I do think the Raikou is underrated, kind of like, like we said. Mm -hmm. But one other thing I had in mind is <clears> that the double ghost is actually pretty neat for the Samurai. Where, um, yeah. like, the double ghost plus the Defiant Primate is actually really strong hazard removal deterrent um, or at least something that will take advantage of the, the removal of the spikes as primate can get plus two or you can just straight up spin block and i like that even though the ghost type is a terra captain it doesn't need to worry about not being a ghost type anymore yeah because skeleton can, can still be there kind of just like what we talked about with um mega mawile and yeah, having a different fairy thing. and a different steel you don't have to worry about or Sinistra too. losing its role. Yeah, or the right period. You don't I mean, have to worry in about a different losing way, role. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, this one is more because there's a different Mon. Mm -hmm. And the problem, though, becomes you need to bring Skeledurge whenever you need, want to Terra Sinistra. And keep uh, your spikes up. Right? You yeah. don't have to. I also but, like, think that Skeledurge is a Mon that can come things. to most games. Like, I, I, I don't agree. think there's a problem with Skeledurge coming to every game. I agree. I agree. Um... Maybe on a team this spread out, it would be harder to fit it onto every team. But like I, when I ran Dirge and and I think it was it was like pre DLC Paldea, but um, yeah. I did not have an issue fitting him onto every single team. <laughs> it's just, he does so much. Speaking of spread more. out team, I do think compared to the other teams, and this is very Itsuki fashion, right? Where mm -hmm. the the high pointers, especially the ones that are left to the end of the draft, like Raikou, Salamence, and Mega Gardevoir, were picked up in the last four rounds of the draft by the way <laughs> Wait. um oh this sorted it by that, that's sorted by point tier yeah i see right but not by the pick order yeah okay. so on the rosters tab it'll show the order that everything was picked but on Let's your see. individual sheet it's just based it's sorted by point tier the um right here. oh yeah the top right. six you usually like to see at least a few more points going into these top six. Yeah. If you're bringing your best six Pokemon to a matchup where somebody else is bringing their best six Pokemon, I think this team is very likely to just bring nowhere near the amount of like equal point total that yeah. the opponent can if bring. These are the right? boxes that you're checking first, and then these are like the fill ins. Like you're not building your core around these high tiers. Yeah, exactly. So like the Salamence and the Gardevoir feel kind of tacked on, right? Yeah. Because they were they were almost afterthoughts. I do think that um, the way that Itsuki drafts is he gets something in his mind that nobody can snipe. So for example, Mega Gardevoir, it was probably at the point, he probably decided that he wanted Mega Gardevoir by the time he picked like, let's say, Sylvalee. Yeah. 
but it's yeah, unlikely yeah, that anybody else will out. snipe it. Yeah. Right. I've done so that I do think that the team can be built around Mega Gardevoir and potentially was built around Mega Gardevoir with that in mind. Yeah. Um, but it, it looks at a glance like it kind of wasn't, and I'm not convinced that it was. They're just looking at <laughs> looking at the team. Um, something else that makes me think that is Gardevoir really needs slow pivots. It really needs chances to come in and actually break. Or I'm else you're just running it. Mega Gardevoir, to be honest, so I don't really know. So, like, just Pixelate Hyper Voice is just really strong, right? Yeah. Or Hyper Beam if you just need to nuke something. But it's a breaker, right? It's yeah. a breaker with utility options and Calm Mind. But rarely will Calm Mind actually just win you a game mm -hmm. because it's so paper thin defensively, right? So, as long as the opponent has anything over 100 speed that can hit like a neutral stab move Gardevoir just kind of explodes yeah so because of that I don't think guard will be switching in to many things um and therefore won't be used to its full potential because it like it either has to forcibly switch into things or it has to be the revenge and if you're revenging with it um then that means you lost them on before that right then Gardevoir only yeah. has I've moved the click before you lose the game. That's true. So I do think that that's just a Gardevoir problem in general, and that's kind of why it's tiered a little bit lower than maybe people would have expected to see it in this league. I, I do Especially think it's really good. so I'm many huge, more like Gen believer. 9 special breakers that exist now. It's like Yeah, exactly. Good. Exactly. Where they can actually run a choice specs or yeah. don't have like 60 defense or whatever guard of war you're gonna scarf where you don't have to worry like yep. if you have that end game situation where you don't have to worry about having to tank a hit if you know yep. you just kind of speed everything that's left yeah to me mega guard almost feels a little bit like itemless hoopa with better um, oh because of magician ability. where it takes the item oh, that makes sense true sorry hoopa unbound i should say <laughs> instead of base hoopa it's just like faster fairy type hoopa unbound yeah I don't really know. What um, and also, the, the hazard removal is honestly atrocious. I understand that the point <laughs> is that you want the opponent to have to defog into your primate. Yeah. But that means you have to bring primate every time, and it also means that they're still dropping is your three layers Is that the point, though, or is that more of like a, this is a thing that happened to work out later on? <laughs> I don't know. Hard to say. I feel like I'm you going don't draft to Samurai that... to be like, ah, oh, I can't wait until I drive draft primate so i well, can get the default like benefit of the doubt would say that if you have a defiant mon on the same team as two two ghost types and the best spike stacker in the game i would i would say benefit of the doubt says that that was intentional okay, it might not have been maybe serious, it likes primate i don't know what do i know serious question though so how much is Pissimian? i think it's like nine maybe or eight or seven Big control F moment. I don't want to because I am only using one hand for this. <laughs> what are you doing with the other one? It's in my pocket. <laughs> <Don't care. laughs> uh, where is Pissimian? Oh, maybe he was drafted. I'm not, I'm not even looking at the. All right, fine. Control F. What the hell? It's five points. Okay, that's really low. <laughs> Why is it so low? I was gonna okay. say. Oh, well, I was gonna say like, well, first of all, okay, if if, if Primeape is seven points, probably because of Rage Fist, right? <laughs> um, yeah, screw that move. Uh, Pissimian is another Defiant Mono Fighting type that's there and and might be able to do more for you. I don't know. And then you have more. that's another place where you can Pissimian get more does, points. I don't think Pissimian does more than Primeape in most things. Isn't it slower? Isn't Primeape like ninety or ninety five? I I think Pissimian just has better coverage. Or it, it does something. I, let me. Actually, I don't know. Yeah, wait. You know what? Pissimino's lower base attack too. I think. Yeah, I think Primeape is just like statistically better at most things. Uh, well, Primeape's not as good at balling. Oh, that is true, actually. <laughs> so this is the ball league. Where were we? Over here. Okay. While you're looking that stuff up, yeah, I look it up will also <laughs> say, I'll also say that the team is really, really slow. And Raikou's the only Mon on the team above 100 speed. And that's not a great look. Plus there's 200s. At least 200s, right? A 95. Like, it feels so clumped around 100 to 90. 
or whatever Samurott is, what, 85 or something? Um, it's It feels really clumped. Um, and I think you're going to have to run, like, Scarf Primate, maybe Scarf Moxie Salamence, um, Scarf Samurott, things like that to make up for it. Maybe Flame Charge Sil Valley. Um, and that makes you really predictable. And I think Itsuki's best draft trait is how unpredictable he is. And I think making up for these traditional shortcomings that you don't necessarily need, but like from a, an objective point of view, like having bad speed control is generally bad. Um, that may not be the case. And Itsuki is known to pull out wins where he says, hey, speed doesn't matter. I'm just going to like cuss that berry Executor Alola you <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. I do think that he's uh, the kind of player that can make up for the shortcomings. But again, kind of like with Stormtide's team, looking at it based on certain metrics, I think the team is it has a lot of shortcomings. Uh, did I even say what I rated it? I don't think I even said, but I actually had it um, at the same as Stormtide's uh, with 4 out of 10. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, okay. I, I rated it pretty low. That might be a little harsh. I do think maybe maybe after looking at it a little bit more, it's maybe a f uh, I would say about a 5, because I do yeah. think there are really strong pieces here. But I think there's so much wrong with like the hazard control. Silvali or Fortress have to be the hazard control, or Salamence or something, right? Which is not optimal. The uh, the speed is pretty abysmal. The um, the Terra Captains, you're kind of bleeding points with with Salamence and stuff, and like Skeledurge. Um, yeah. I think I already said the speed tiers, but yeah, kind of clumped and things and like that. Primate and the pivots. I, I just looked Primate it up. Is Pissimian is 120 base attack, and Primeape is 105. Uh, All right. Primeape just has speed over Pissimian. Pissimian has 100 base HP versus Primeape's 65. Uh, 90 base defense versus Primeape's 60. I mean, granted, Primeape can run Eviolite. So yeah, Eviolite counteracts that. With that. Um, but in general, Pissimian has better base defenses and, like, uh, 15 better attack. It's just slower. Yeah. And, and it has worse special attack, so... If you want that Ooh. overheat snipe for Primate... Uh, and doesn't have Rage right. Fist. There's definitely a Rage Fist tax on right. Primate. Oh, yeah, I'd say sure. they could probably both be like 5 or yeah. 6. Yeah. In I'm just saying, other like, leagues and nobody you could would do... Nine. Like, yeah. if that's another place that you want to save points, if you're just going to be running like Defiant Counter, like Primate, maybe Pissimi is an option there too. You do your Defiant, yep. like Adrenaline Orb or... Because Adrenaline Orb would, would make the speed serviceable. Or I guess oh, Adrenaline Orb wouldn't be for Defog. That's just Intimidate. Um... But uh, I mean, there's options. I'm I'm surprised actually that Pissimian's only five points. But I guess there's just a lot of fighting options, and and being a mono fighting type, that's why I didn't put it on my team. Was because I was like, well, I have Annihilate and Invernape, so I'm not gonna get the uh, the mono fighting type that doesn't really do anything. These ones don't too. <laughs> yeah. So are you ready to move on? Yep, I'm good to go. On to Boo -boo -zab. Zabe. Okay. Um, out of the gates, what do you got? Um, what did I write down? I said, oh, one because it is Mel Metal. But what? Uh, <laughs> I said, but actually eight. So I guess I, I'm getting a lot of eights. I guess. Okay. Um, you're again a little higher than me. I have it at yeah. seven. I said, um, I said a lot of options, solid mons for each major role, and because that's really all yeah. I looked at and noticed, I was like, okay, you have you have the best spinner, um, you have a really good special attacker. Uh, you have another really good special attacker as your Terra Cap. Because at first it's like, why isn't Hydreigon Terra Cap? And I was like, oh, Moth is also a really good Terra Cap. Um, and then yep. Mel Metal, really good physical attacker. Options for slower situations. And if you want to trick room, you can. Ogre Pond, just a cracked mon in general for a lot of things. Um, I guess the only downside I would see looking at this, um, which isn't really downside when you when you note that Iron Moth before Terra is a, is a quad resist, uh, and then you have your a couple of resists here. Is that your grass or your uh, your grass type um, isn't a grass resist and isn't a your water type and, not and a your fire water resist. Not a fire resist. That was the other one. I was, yeah. I was gonna say like your water type's not a not a grass resist. Yeah, it's but. not a fire or an ice resist. Yeah, and yeah, so it's, that it's, is it's something... just, that's the typing that that stood out to me is like your grass and it's your only grass type and your only water type and it doesn't cover like three of like the major things that those types usually try to help cover i agree and a lot of um i guess just kind of talking about 
negatives before we get into positives this time. I think that Great Tusk Hydreigon as your first two picks um, share so many like hard weaknesses that having Melmetal and no traditional water type as the only stop gaps to that doesn't You're talking look like too ice? great. Like having a sorry. Are you talking like ice specifically? Yeah. So ice fairy. fairy yeah. Um, honestly, even like special fighting great tusk doesn't want to take um and there was another type i forgot what type is in there i don't remember there were there were a few types that i was like yeah these like share a lot of overlap and there's not a lot of special defense between those two so surely you would want a steel type that can have special defense on it right and it's kind of the only option right now is av melmetal um, Water Pond can't even hold an item and doesn't resist the I think Screamtail, I think you're underrating Screamtail's ability to take new so, hits. That's where I was going to go, though. This team is so over-reliant on Screamtail. And that's not a it's problem, a but it's also your <laughs> fastest mod. Yeah. Oh, that is so interesting. It's it's well, going to want to be running... Fastest by one point. Yeah, I mean, you have okay. two 110s. If you ever want to win a speed tie with 110s, which I would argue is actually more important on this team because 110 is your next fastest. Right, that's a, yeah, because you're going to be trying to compete. Like if, it, if it was on the team where Keldeo was the fastest mon, you don't need to win the speed tie against the 110s. Yeah. Right? So it's not the end of the world. Maybe you'll creep the things that are creeping Keldeo sometimes. But um, <clears throat> I think specifically on this team... Sorry, one second. I think specifically yeah. on this team, having two 110s and a 108, like, everything is creeping that. Yeah. I mean, Iron so. Moth is, I don't want to say it's like a fake 110, but, like, you also do kind of account for, like, this is probably going to be, well, no, it'd be usually be booster special attack, I guess, instead of speed. Yeah, I would say usually special attack, but yeah. regardless, it doesn't matter because people are going to creep the Ogre Pond Yeah, they're still going to creep it, yeah. yeah. So it's almost like you're forced to try and run speed more often because you have something else that people are already yeah preparing for you know or you'll just be running scarf a ton yeah now i will say like you said the trick room on this team <coughs> does look really good with like trick room baton pass scream tail into mm -hmm. metal with wish support i think wish support and trick room support are going to be really pivotal to the success of the team which because also of how makes it hard to make scream a cover all defensive mon yeah it's a cover all defensive mon but like you don't want to rely on one mon on any team yeah. to be the the cornerstone of the backbone yeah like you would want similar to sweets's team how he had corv clef um milo right where like they can be tailored defensively to either side whereas this one has the corv equivalent is melmetal which basically can't be specially defensive or not nearly as effectively as it would like to with mm -hmm. given how bad the ice and fairy resists for the top two are um and ogre pawn that can't run an item and doesn't resist half the things you actually needed to resist as a water type yeah uh, or a grass type so that that's kind of my my thoughts i do think like these are definitely just the cons and i would say the final con is that melmetal in webs doesn't make too much sense it's like so slow that it doesn't actually take advantage of the webs huh, um, and that's that honestly the last bad thing i have to say about it do you, well, do you have anything webs, for webs is kind of anti-synergy with trick room but, but uh yeah i mean you, not that you, you just you're, run you're one always or running that yeah 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 you run one or the it's other. not like i don't it's think it's not like doing like a bombi with a with a trick room team i think galv yeah. has a lot more options yeah, yeah. um okay so <laughs> to get into the good things though i think despite the um the type weakness that Tusk and Hydreigon share, I think that's a really, really strong core. Yeah. Um, together with Melmetal. And honestly, with Terra Iron Moth, Terra Moth is just so terrifying that... Terrifying. Like, you, you just specs Terra Fire Overheat through whatever you want. Or you, you booster with... The, like, the agility booster set is really strong. Um, there, there's It's very flexible. And with web support, it gets even stronger um so i really like that um yeah a lot of really good bonk options honestly between tusk hydragon melmetal water pond and iron moth 
there you can just slap a choice item on any of them or even just booster on a couple of them um or swords dance water pawn and just kill whatever's in front of you half the time and honestly the pivot game is pretty decent um between i think i think pivot high dragon and baton pass screamtail is going to be pretty important for the team I think um, and is going to bring pass, in Dreamtail is hard to run a lot. Yeah, I agree. Well, I, if you're running Trick Room, I think it's kind of the, yeah, the first the thing room. that you run with it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think that that. Um, okay, the problem though with Screamtail running so selflessly is that it's going to be chipped down very easily. So it it won't be well, very often down, where you'll be able to run wish deck things. Sorry? Like, it'll also just be bait. Like, if you know that it's not running anything to hit you or threaten, like, setting up itself, every time that mon comes in, you just put in your mon that needs to heal or put in your mon that needs to, like, do whatever. Like, I, I've had situations like yeah. that against Screamtail where it's like, as soon as I find out that they're not running an offensive move and that they're, like, just dual screens, just this, it's like, now suddenly you getting me down to 9% of my mon that needs to come in and roost doesn't matter because 100% of the time when Screamtail comes in, I swap to that mon and click roost. So, And I think that's, that that's fair, the risk with, also... with, like, Baton Pass being necessary for it on some, like, on some of these team builds, like, when you want it to be able to be doing other things or, like, when you want it to be not threatening offensively but at least not just, like, a free passive mon to come in on um it when it's your only defensive mon that needs to be coming in a lot like you're gonna open up those yeah. opportunities a lot more if you reveal that you're not running anything offensive so i agree but i also think that you bringing in your defensive mon let's say you bring in your corv and you roost on my scream tail right so like i i set trick room as you switch in core right is basically what you're saying mm -hmm. and then you roost as i baton pass into iron moth right yeah, I mean, in that okay, case, not not like, moth and trick room, but like you understand, right? Where it's like, let's see, say I even yeah. just set rocks, the turn Corv comes in, but also you uh, roost as I baton pass, and then whatever's coming in is going to deal more than the fifty percent that you healed off with that roost. Well, no, not necessarily. So let, let's instead of saying Corvenite, let's say Clefable with leftovers, running okay. wish protect. So you heal sixty two point five. So you so you heal and then you protect stall a turn of trick room. And then, you know, like there's just a lot of... You're still taking more than 62% on whatever comes in on the Bandit Melmetal. On the Bandit Melmetal. Right? Like, well, right. Like, like, more often than not, that's going to be the case. Between Great Tusk, Specs Hydreigon, Offensive Melm, even, like, Water Pond, and then Terra Iron Moth, I think it's more likely that whatever comes in takes more damage than the whatever you're saying in this situation would heal. I'm more just talking about like a scenario in a late game because I've had these scenarios before in a late game where you found yourself in a bad position earlier on in the game because you let a, like a, a key defensive monk get too low that like needs to be able to check something and and presenting it with these opportunities to heal up like it's it's one thing if it sets up but it's another thing if it's like you might already have an answer to trick room mail metal like when you're like not that there are that many answers to it that are super reliable but like you know may, maybe it's like maybe you get that mon into roost and then and then you're the memo that comes in sure and then you swap to the mon that can handle the, the banded mail metal in, in trick room or whatever it is it's just the point is that while they were getting their setup done in that turn you've also given yourself a, a, a certain a turn to set up and sure maybe the matchup means that that is more beneficial to them than it is to you I'm sh that is definitely a possibility um but there's also going to be matchups where if you're relying too much on that and that you have to get that set up or else you can't do anything at all then it might be more beneficial to your opponent to be like okay here's my heal up turn and your setup turn like we both get our turn to set up but my setup benefits me more than your setup benefits you and i think you run into that easy amount but that being said the rest of the team because I think this is a good team. I think the rest of the team does cover that pretty well. Like, it's not like you have an entirely That's passive team that gets walled super easily. I'm saying that specifically with Screamtail as your only mon that can do that and that it has to juggle so many of those things that you might run into that problem in specific matchups that you can that you're, you're letting your opponent kind of juggle around and like get those necessary heals because we're not even mentioning like re regen mons like a regen mon that comes in and wish passes you know on the screamtail setting up like maybe they're wish passing to 
a mega agron or something, right? I, I don't know, like something that that's gonna sit on the metal metal. But again, mega agron doesn't want to sit in front of Iron Moth, so it's like it really it depends exactly. on how you play. That's it. What and, I'm dep- and it depends on the stage of the game. Maybe you lost Moth at some point earlier in the game, and we're down to a four v three. But those three I think that this are is on getting the other too team, hypothetical. way too right. hypothetical here. Hold up, let's let's yeah. nip this in the bud here. <laughs> but that, that's my point with with just Screamtail yeah. in general. And yep. but I think okay. overall it's a good team though. Okay. Um. I think we kind of glazed over Poltergeist. Oh, Wobbuffet, um, you're right. Yeah, so counter... Oh, uh, I think Poltergeist is actually strong. It probably wants to be a captain, but I don't think dropping Iron Moth as a captain for Poltergeist is anywhere near Yeah, yeah. I think you definitely want Iron Moth or Hydreigon. Like, like yeah, one of those yeah, the team is, is not. The <laughs> yeah, the team is not set up to have Poltergeist as a captain, and that's yeah. fine. Um, I agree, though. It could be a good captain, but it's definitely not worth dropping one of these two. Yeah, so I think the, the speed is a little wonky. You don't want Screamtail to be your fastest mon when you have two 110s. Uh, it feels a little a little clunky. Yeah. Um, I think Maybe there's a lot of good for, choice options for him, on the team between like Tusk, Hydreigon. Uh, even Galantula can, can run choice sometimes, and Moth. Yeah, Spectrum I think there's a, the real. team has a lot of ways to close out games, honestly. So... Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's pretty much just the just how much pressure, specific sorry specifically Screamtail Malmetal are in to yeah. be defensive answers. Uh, I feel like Tusk and Hydreigon are going to have to make up for a lot of that. And, and that's Tusk, not don't underestimate like. Tusk defensively, especially with Wish Passing being an option. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm, but I also think it's safe to say that it doesn't want to have to be the defensive thing. No, yeah, it doesn't want to have to yeah. be. So that's kind of why I Whoa, gave it a seven. Wait. I'm surprised you, what with how much you were ripping guys? into it, that you gave it a higher rating than me. <laughs> why does Pulse have 114 special defense? I don't know. That's really high. I don't anyway, know that's high. you get to wrap that up there. <laughs> yeah. No, and, and I, I wasn't really trying to rip into it too much. Like I actually, I did, I did like it overall. Oh. But but you pointed Remember out how much you were yapping about it that you yeah. uh, really didn't like something. Yeah, well, you pointed out Screamtail kind of being the only defensive mod, and I hadn't really noticed that before. And oh. and yeah. as a avid pink jigglypuff shaped thing user um i i had some thoughts yeah yeah, yeah. does that change your rating at all uh what did i say it was you said eight eight i might um i might bump it down actually this might be dramatic i might bump down to six because i actually they're they're maybe 6.9 69 nice that was the joke um and uh now like i i, I do i don't think it's an eight anymore but I don't hate it. Like I don't hate it. Like I actually still like it. But I think there's a lot of strong pieces, and I think a... the the sum of the parts is at least equal to the whole. Yeah. Therefore, we're still talking about this. Part. It's a good team. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I, yeah. There are a couple problems with it, in my opinion. Yeah. That I wouldn't want to have to deal with, but I don't think it's the be all end all, and yeah. I expect to see the team at least with a few wins. So. Yeah, it's one I definitely want to wait to see in action before I can yeah. really hold judgment. All right, let's move on to Mudkip. Or sorry, um, McDoop. McDoop. Uh, I've had said just before we get into it. I I think it's funny. I've had three people comment to me saying, "Hey, Nahima, just so you know, uh, you you typoed Mudkip in the doc." <laughs> and I go, "Oh, damn. Okay, could you read their Discord name and tell me how they spell it? Then I'm not sure how to spell Mudkip." They go, why? I know how to spell Mudkip. M-U-D-K-I-P. And I'm like, oh, can you just check their Discord name to make sure that that's actually how you spell it? Just, it, I feel maybe it was a little too passive aggressive, but that's their Discord name. I don't know. I don't know uh, what, what you want me to did say. Did Shuckle that's... Supremacy finally fix their name? Yes, Shuckle Supremacy also Thank fixed God. the typo in their name. That was that was one where it was like, I couldn't, in my, in, in my right mind, as a graphic designer... Uh, spell that out as it was spelled in his <laughs> name on any of the graphics that we did. I always corrected yeah. that. <laughs> so Alrighty, so on the Mudkip's team, what do you what do you have out of ten? Uh, so I put six out of ten, and the words that I put was, and this is one again. I just kind of like glanced at it. <laughs> so yeah. I said maybe two defensive pivot heavy. Need to make sure Bolt and Mega Galley don't get walled. And that was before I noticed that. Uh, Ogre Pond is on this team as well. So I, uh, I'm thinking true. that that uh, Bolt and Gallade were kind of like the only Mons that are going to be putting out a lot of offense here. 
Um, and that might still be true. Like, you know, I, I guess Ogre Brunt is another piece of that for sure. Um, but, uh, you, like, you have these, like, these really nasty, like, set up, like, screens and defensive mons here. But if you're, if your mon walls Mega Gallade or you're a ground type that also deals with the, the dragon type, at least a little bit, um, these mons that don't have reliable self recovery without like the wish passing like i'm worried that there might be scenarios where you have nothing to break through a core because you're relying on the coverage of like these three mons basically to mm. whittle something down and there might be scenarios where you're not able to do that whereas like i feel like a loma mola especially and just a regen core in general wants to be able to be putting out more of that pressure than it's receiving because it's just passively healing it off as it's pivoting around and i feel like this team just doesn't put it out as much when there are a lot of things that can like Gallade is 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 more of an exception because you know it's it's hard to wall Gallade in a lot of scenarios um or mega Gallade but if that's your only mon you know that's still a scenario where it's like well maybe it's not about walling but it's it's that every time that Gallade gets a kill you need to have an answer for the thing that outspeeds and kills it or or maybe you yeah. weren't ready for the scarf that come came in and killed it but you had to take the risk because it was the only way you were going to kill that mod yeah. right like it, it, that okay. that's okay bring it back answer, bring it back so. bring it back um i reel it actually in. yeah i got to reel you in <laughs> i think um metro what do you mean y'all are still live jesus we it's only been an hour and a half she's talking about easter she Jesus is, he came back. Jesus is he, still live. He did die, but he, he is live now. Yeah, we're almost halfway there. Um, surely we set a timer for the next coming team yeah. so we don't lose focus. Um, so I took a long time to go over this team. I, I actually initially had it uh, really low, and then I put it, then I bumped it up a little, and then I put it lower again, and then I actually landed on 8 out of 10. Wow. Um, because I kind of had the same first impression as you, where it's like, oh, it um, it doesn't have like too much breaking power. Um, after Bronzong, it gets really lost in the sauce. Like having Cyclozar plus Torn T on the same team doesn't make much sense to me. The uh, kind of similar to Sweets' team, like the Torn T plus Aloe defensive core is so weak to Electric yeah. that having Runarigus as your ground type just feels not. <laughs> very good to me yeah. but like raging bolt four times resists it it's not gonna immune the volt switches but um, no but it immunes yeah i, I like, came around paired by, by coming out on t-bolts constantly yeah, at least true um but i think honestly runeragus is definitely bringable and i think it'll probably come to Ooh, at least points. like two or three games maybe more um but then i started looking at like what top six can this team bring and I saw, you know, the Terra Cornerstone, um, the Raging Bolt, the the sweet Regen Core, the one of the best offensive mons in the game, yeah. um, screens plus parting shot pivoting with Grimmsnarl, blanket check Terra Bronzong that can just choose one thing to not be able to win the game and sit in front of it kind of thing, yeah. you know? Um, I think there's actually a lot of tools for this team to pull out wins against even teams that might have winning matchups just through uh like raging bolt being stupid having a regen core just being uninteractive um yeah uh, yeah i think i said screens but like parting shot like i said bronzong just being like super stopgap yeah i think there is it, it's a really demonic top core honestly yeah, i um, i hate there's also <laughs> yeah there's also a really strong um offensive profile here where you have like multiple special attackers with torn and raging bolt yeah. multiple physical attackers galade ogre Pawn. and if anything like Grimstorm looking at raging too. bolt torn i'm almost still more scared of the physical attackers than the special attackers yeah which is hard to say i think terra um rock Pawn is super super underrated um and grass grass basically double stab rock is um yeah is really really good yeah like, like i said um, when i rated it i i just didn't even notice the ogre pun yeah <laughs> yeah that does i do think lot. i do think again after the bronzong pick the team gets a little bit um lost like i don't think goal bat cyclozar colossal are anywhere near mandatory ideally you would maybe upgrade runarigus to a better ground but 
Is it the end You're of the world? Like, no. Trade in Cyclozar and then Cyclozar and then uh, yeah, and then like you could get a thirteen point that. ground type. Yeah. Like if that's a, a Nito there, for example, over like Golbat, Cyclozar, Runarigus, mm -hmm. it might just look a lot better. I'm not sure. Uh, you'd have to play around with it. I think there are options for it to get better. Which, if you have a team that's very easy to make um, improvements, I think that shows that the problems of the team aren't that big a deal. You know, yeah. so I actually think, um, yeah, based on like just regen pivoting, the flexibility that Torn has in the first place, um, the setup options like between Torn, Raging Bolt, Pawn, Gallade, um, etc., are are really strong. And you're not capped at 110 speed. Um, like Torn, it doesn't like being the fastest mod on the team necessarily because then it always kind of has to be the fastest mod on the team no, you instead of running bulky. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. You do have Cyclozar for that if you like really need. I wouldn't ever run Don't. them both on the same team, but, but you could, you could, and that is true. Yeah. Any any last thoughts? Uh, my last thoughts are that let's speed up because I didn't. Yeah, yeah. Really have a lot. Oh, I do think Hazard. I'm not, not going to just start ranting for the sake of it because I did not think yeah, yeah, yeah. about this team. <laughs> All right. Cool, cool, cool. On to Tilted Tony. Tilted Tony. I have Tony, you're not going to believe this, at a 6. Uh, wow. Is, I just started putting all the... <laughs> like, I, this is where I started speeding a little bit. Uh, oh, I, I said... Yeah, okay, the, my, my description makes a lot of sense. So I said, interesting core. It feels like it's missing something, though. Not sure what. This was okay. one that I probably looked at and said, wow, that looks really good, but I'm probably missing something obvious that this doesn't have. Okay. And then just moved on. <laughs> so. uh, fair. Um, okay, I'll try and give you some of my thoughts then i think this is my favorite uh draft of the division wow i'm not gonna lie i think um i think the terror captains are amazing it uses full use of the 25 points which again is not mandatory but like nice. terror quaval is so good and shaman yeah. is really flexible it honestly shaman being mono grass type i think is one of the things that holds shaman back sometimes yeah um and having access to different types might change that. I don't know. I haven't ever seen Terra Shaman, but I think it's interesting, and I think Quaval is the star player of the the Captain Core. But yeah, I'm interested so, to see it. So Quaval is the star captain of the Terra. Who's the who has Defog on this team? I like in that decks. Latios. Latios, Togekiss. Togekiss. Okay. And then Quack is the only spinner. Right? Quack is a spinner. Yeah. Mm, do you think that's a problem? If what only having three removers? Well, not only having three removers, more so like that one of them is Latios, who who sometimes has four move slot syndrome, depending on the on the matchup. Quack. Well, who, it's all depending on the matchup. You bring the yeah, one that I guess. Yeah, I guess that's true. Like yeah. you, you, you might, you could probably be a lot more flexible, like having yeah. Quack not it, have to deal with it. I just know there are some times where where Quack might not want to have to also fit rapid spin on on the move set especially as, as one of the terror captains if you're relying on him to be offensive a little bit more um but also rapid spin is not even just a bad move to have on him like you're still getting that speed boost that you that you want to, yeah. to set up um yeah honestly i'm trying to think like there's not really any does, does petra have t spikes no okay so like you're not yeah you're not super concerned about having to run defog over over spin in really yeah any scenario, one of the like. one of the kind of drawbacks that i saw of the team is the only hazard you can run is rocks yeah but e like is that that Adrian much of a ammo. yeah i don't think that's that much of a, a problem like really. my my thing is i'm looking at the team and there's multiple mons that can do pretty much everything and they're all good yeah i don't know how all of this fit within the point cap like look i i do know obviously but um you designed this like looking at the fact because to your point of oh well then you have to have Latias or Togekiss Defog if you want Quaval to spin like yeah those are good mons and if those were like the best mons on your team that you don't want to defog then that would be a problem but like they're good mons that can fill the role I don't know it's yeah. it's hard to hard to describe when well, I also if, just noticed that team, like nobody's really the options Sorry, one second. If the option yeah. was between Latios, Quaval, and Cyclozar instead of Togekiss, yeah, does that make it so that 
Latias is less likely to be the defogger because you're bringing cycles are more often? No. You know, I think you're you're replacing a good mon in the role with another good mon in the role. Yeah. And I think that's actually really strong. Same with wish passing. Latias can wish pass. Togekiss can wish pass. Right. That's true. Um, Heatran can rock. Mamoswine can rock. I haven't seen Togekiss in so long since it's not in Gen Nine that like I was kind of underrating it passively too. Oh. Um, there's so much status spread on the team. If you, I'm not counting Hypnosis or Dark Void, Dark Rye, but like T Wave, Toxic, Latias, just Flame Body on the Heatran, plus obviously Willow is Toxic. Petron is like the the Toxic Mon. Yeah. Um, okay, Cool Quavel doesn't status, but Togekiss okay. is like the Paralyzed Mon. Yeah. Um, there, there's so many options for status, and Petron really appreciates that with Hex sets, actually. That's true. Um, so I think there, there's a lot going for for the team. Um, just getting burns off on things are good for Latias, good for Mamo, good for Togekiss that want to come in on physical attackers sometimes. Petron doesn't need it. Um, Paralysis is really good for like offensive Heatran, offensive Mamoswine. I, yeah. I think there's just so much going for the team that you never feel bad about bringing any of your... Mo I personally probably wouldn't bring Electivire often, but like it's... <laughs> Considering that's the worst mod on the there. team, it's not that bad. Yeah. Right? I think there's, I, there's a lot going here. I noticed, too, that it's like, this team also isn't, like, particularly weak to rocks. Like, like if, if the yeah. it's not the end of the world if you can't bring removal, I feel like. Yeah. I mean, because, like, like, Togekiss, like, you could probably just run boots either way. Like, if you're not bringing, like, I would, I would much rather just run boots Togekiss without hazard removal than, you know, have to... I don't even know what I would say. Was I'd rather do that then, but you know what I'm saying. Like, it's like it's not the end of the world if you don't bring removal and then your your Togekiss just has to run boots. Like that's that's fine. Yeah. Like instead oh, of like, no. wasting another move slot on it. Um, yeah, and Mamo, right. I guess, is weak too. But like, or no, he's not weak. He's neutral. It's not ground. Yeah. And then and Heatran's also neutral. Uh, uh, Latias is a flyer that's that's neutral. Um, yeah. Really, it is just it's just Togekiss, right? Yep, Togekiss is the only weakness. Yeah, so like there's one boots on it. I mean, maybe slight, like very, very asterisk downside. Your knock resist is, you know, don't doesn't want to get his boots knocked, but who cares? Like <laughs> that's like a very. Yeah, I mean, he trying to give you a knock resist. Yeah. Even something that I've seen people do before is just running on Latias specifically, just run weakness policy. Yeah. As your knockoff as switch. Knockoff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not that like that specific tech means that the team doesn't have a or does no. now have a knock resist but like and there are ways to circumvent that and your ghost type like and quick can take on too. yeah that's true well your ghost type as well like isn't super concerned with physical dark type like because i mean knock a lot of knock users are, are like not dark types too like yeah petron can take a not a non -stab yeah even like a stab once. knockoff <laughs> like, can probably take like 30 well yeah yeah you probably That's like really good but like, and also consider that it's only going to do that damage once, like the higher yep. damage. Like, you just need to be able to survive once, and he definitely can. Uh, yep. Dark Rock. Um, just to resist, just to speed it up a little bit more. Yeah, um, it's another team that has pretty decent damage profiles, where you have a lot of special offense, but the physical um, attackers, like you can't ignore. It is definitely more specially yeah. inclined, but. Having uh, a Moxie booster physical. and a banded Mamoswine on your team means that you can't ignore Fizz Def either. Yeah. As as Tony's opponent, um, there's near infinite setup op setup options on this team with Darkrai, Latias, Petron, again Quack, Plot Togekiss. I guess you can SD Shaman, but that's not that good. Yeah. But still, there's like what five or six? I think I said five consistent setup users. You can just pick Bulk your Electivire. True. There we go. Woke up metronome. Yeah. Um, you can just pick completely hand tailor your team every single game. This is probably the most flexible team I've ever seen in Truant Division. And honestly, this might even be one of my favorite teams in the whole league, let alone in the division. I actually really, really, really like it. I, I'm and this is definitely a hundred percent for this. Yeah, one. it's definitely <laughs> biased towards things that I like. Yeah. Like last season, I had the Tarot Quavel and I fell in love with it. I also recently drafted and won a season with Petron in the PGA. Um, Latias is one of my all-time faves. And Darkrai is something that I've been really interested in using for generations. So m maybe I'm completely biased here. 
but no, um, I, I agree, and, and I, I, I think there's I a lot of. I haven't been here. a huge fan of, of like running. I ran Latios once in Dark Rai. I haven't run, but like I'm not a huge fan of him. And I would still say I I, I agree. Like now, now that we like looked through and actually looked at, it, I, I'm definitely upping this one. Yeah, nice. to, to like probably at least an eight. But maybe some things to work on is like Dark Rai could use some some pivots other than Petrarun. But like between Petrarun, Coquavel as slower ish pivots that's fine uh, also the speed like tiers that. yeah true also the speed tiers are really clumped around 80 with like heatran petron quack togekiss yeah, that's really low yeah that's Heatrans the thing is like it's clumped <laughs> it's clumped but it's um i think clumping between 75 and 85 is like not the end of the world it's a lot no. different than clumping to like 100 Maybe maybe um, a little vulnerable to trick room. <laughs> true. But. Maybe vulnerable to trick room. And maybe the team will just come down to whether Darkrai is a fraud mod or not, right? There's a lot of allegations out for it right now. So I guess it'll come down to whether Darkrai actually puts in the value that it looks like it's putting in as the 125 speed, like, payoff cleaner. I'll be honest, I was kind of surprised that's 19 points just like looking at this but i haven't played against it a lot so i guess like 135 special attack and 125 speed is not anything to scoff at <laughs> i mean you could just fling off dark pulses yeah the main thing holding it back really is just low base power stabs as opposed to weavile that yeah like the, the, knock. the stabs have you have prio you have stab ice and knockoff has permanent right. damage yeah and, be, and 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 fighting is one of the more popular priority types too so yeah for dark no dark is not best. like actually super frail i think it's 80s across the board i don't remember 90, 70 hp 90 90 defenses. nice it's not that bad so effectively 80s but yeah um yeah it doesn't actually die to like just random mock punch like yeah. we file does anyway that that's my thoughts on the team um we'll hopefully dark rye isn't a fraud but i think this is definitely at least top three in the league for me. Nice. Okay. Uh, yeah. Lethal, who is... On the Lethal Blue, who's been waiting least... around through all of our yapping. Yeah, Thanks I was going to say, as recently as like two minutes ago, or 10 yeah. minutes ago, or 30 minutes ago. Okay. I, last um, I haven't written too much about this, That's but it. I have some thoughts. What do you think? I have. Wait, I think I think this might be my highest one. Oh, wait. It's tied for... I have this at a nine. Wow, nice. I have... Uh... I, well, I said Rotom Wash and Garchomp together is always good. Uh, Tried and true. Metagross is a beast in that deck. So those are the comments that I wrote. Um, yeah. I I just think I, I just think I just like the the type diversity in the top tier, and I think that all these mods work really well, like to kind of like play off of each other. Um, like I don't know. I guess I guess you're kind of missing a high tier. No, because I mean, you have Metacross for Steel. Uh, I was gonna say like, because like the the fairy, like who comes on on fairy, but it's just Metacross. Um, <laughs> um, but besides it that, has I mean, like shades it's, it's of Gen cool. Seven to me. Yeah, like me asking where I'm like Garchomp, Rotom, Metagross, Gengar, Incineroar. Yeah. All of these are like big Gen Seven ones. Even honestly, Mega Pinsir was still decent in, in Gen Seven too. Yeah, and, Crab um, and then Meowth is. I don't underestimate this one. Meowth is basically just. Uh, Greninja clone yeah. from back in the day. Yeah. Not clone, but like the, the same the role same that people would have run Greninja in back then. Right. I personally yeah. think Enamorous is... So Enamorous is great, but same as Mawile, I don't like it as the only fairy on the team. Yeah, I can There's a lot of pressure that Metagross is going to be in to take Ice and um, Dragon and Fairy for the team. Yeah. And honestly, grass too. Um, Incineroar is not the most impressive to help it out with. I do think Terra Incineroar is um, probably the low light of the team. I was thinking that too. I, I think Incineroar would be the, the one thing that I might change as well. Like just like just. Like I don't think it needs to change. I just think that the way the points work out, where if you want Terra Metagross, Incineroar has to be the captain. Just feels a little bit bad. Maybe there's a way to change it so the Mega Pincer changes into something that is a better Terra Captain. Maybe. I'm not certain. I, I think um, 
I think it's honestly it's it's great and um like just as a whole other than I think Terra Captain's not great and the hazard removal I noticed is pretty bad um unless you plan on bringing cryogonal like defog rotom yeah that's it but you have but a I mega guess... pincer oh yeah right so is mega pincer not coming or and is enamorous running boots all the time or is rotom just running defog every week for enamorous to run boots yeah if it, if, if it doesn't want to run scar for specs but it's it's not the, the end of the world for it to run boots and it's not the end of the world for rotom to run defog yeah the fact that um it makes its nasty plot sets and it's like scarf trick set or whatever sets worse because the rest of your team needs those hazards gone that's the, mm -hmm. kind of the problem though you know especially yeah, if you're true. trying to pivot around oh also incineroar would need boots too so if you ever get knocked like incineroar like we just talked about incineroar is the knockoff switch we'll just play doubles because then then they were, then you won't really have to deal with hazards oh true challenge them to gen 9 vgc regular yeah. what's the regulation right now currently i i don't know i think it's i think all it's right. going to be h all right I don't know. <laughs> challenge them to like <laughs> vgc reg h and you're and you're good and <laughs> don't worry yeah I think, Point like, yeah, Cryogonal is not coming to more than two battles this season. If it does, like, hey, kudos to you for bringing Cryogonal <laughs> um, to facilitate Rotom. Yeah. I, um, um, the speed is pretty decent, I think actually. I think Meow I think, being your um, fastest couple. Meow is fine being the fastest. Uh, what is it, 123? That's really good. Yeah. Um, and it Incident never Rotom minds is. being fast, as opposed to something like Torn that can be fast but wants to run yeah. bulky yeah yeah pretty much always yeah i was fine being anyway. just frail jolly every game yep um i'd say that between like garchomp enamorous pincer cryogonal gengar that's a lot of mons between 100 and 110 yeah so it's opponents look like a monkey with 90 base those. mons can maybe well do you have a rotom they have to creep i don't know i don't really hate the I don't really hate the, uh, the speed tiers here. I don't think they're bad. Um, it is another team that would be really weak to Trick Room. Just kind of because everything um, is decently quick. Like, Incineroar is, what, 65 60. or something? 60. But, like, you have you have good... Um, you have good priority in Metagross, at least, that like in Trick Room. At least it's not yeah. like a free sweep or anything for some mods. Yeah, but, it's fine. I mean, uh, there are prio but... options, which is nice. You know, you have the fake out on. I maybe Meow has it, but I know yeah. that at least um, Incineroar, Incineroar is... has it. Pincer has oh, a really quick attack. There's the potentially Terra Steel Bullet Punch well, on Metagross. Let's be real. I am very interested in Terra Metagross. Yeah, I think especially I after post buffs. Such a good typing before Terra, so it is kind of interesting to, to see like what it is, we're yeah. going to do with Terra. Yeah. Um, Post buff though, I think with like the, with having knockoff, with having psychic bangs, um, with having heavy slam, these are a lot of really good buffs for Metagross. Yeah. And I'm really interested in seeing it. I think Terra with weakness policy is going to be pretty cool too. Maybe you like stay steel type, eat the earthquake as you agility. Oh, Meowha sucker as well. Oh, okay. That's the yeah, that's the priority that we're thinking of. I don't think yeah, that's yeah. fake out though. Okay. Um, um, yeah, I don't know. There, there's a lot going for the team, and it's. I think it's very good too. I think it's definitely an above-average team. I don't think the wheel has been reinvented with the team, which is fine. You yeah. don't have to reinvent the wheel. I don't think I've said my my conclusion though for the team. I, I have it. Yeah, I, don't think I was skirting between seven point five and eight. Um, I think I'm gonna go seven point five, right now because, I think the answer with. Yeah, Pinsir and the Terra and Cineroar could be could be optimized. Maybe not optimized is the right choice. I think Mega Pinsir is really cool, and like Incineroar is really cool, and it feels bad to drop them, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm I don't think Enamorous is that key to the team. Maybe that having Enamorous, Pinsir, pair. and Cryogonal change around to let you have a better 11 or 12 point captain and a more reliable fairy type. Yeah. As well as maybe I don't know how like Flurgis would work in here where you get a more reliable fairy and a defogger. I don't know. I'm just kinda just kinda talking aloud. 
um, or just thinking aloud rather. Yeah, I see what you mean. Um, yeah. I will say that, that one thing that I noticed, and this this might be going kind of back to like sort of a, a similar tangent with like the Latios thing, but this team is really good into psychic types, and uh, like like defensively, because you have your two dark types and you have your Metagross and Metagross and yeah. Nat decks with Pursuit being able to dual resist a, a psychic type and just not let it leave. Um, True. The, I don't. Think I almost Malakazam wish as off were drafted, right? I don't know. Well, what I was going to say is that I almost wish that there was a Mon that was more susceptible to Psychic on this team. Like, you really only have Gengar. Mm. Like, like it's it's not it's not that it's not that it makes a team worse. It's that it's almost like a missed potential where it's like you could really scare teams that need to answer this this Mon that's weak to Psychic, but then also like make it really hard for them to bring a Psychic type or like reliably bring like a Specs Psychic set of some kind you know because you deny it so well i see what you mean i don't think that that's to the fault of the no it, yeah i, I don't like i wouldn't say i think like i said it's more of a missed opportunity because, yeah. than a than a than a uh than an actual downside yeah but yeah okay. that's okay. i think that, that's I think my thoughts i to, think we're good to yeah i think on. let's head off oh i do think that it's nice that garchomp doesn't have to be the the only mon that's like slightly above 100 to speed creep the 100 mons um, because you do currently have the Enamorous and the the Gengar and the Mega Pinsir, it doesn't have to be like the oh I need to outspeed the Mew so I have oh, to yeah. be full speed Garchomp. You can run a little bit bulkier and and be fine with that. Yeah. All right. Okay. On to the next. Neon. 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 Lights. Neon. I have uh, back to the number six. <laughs> so, number six. Uh, this okay. is, again, I'm kind of speed running through these ones when, yep. I, when I got to them. Uh, so I said number six, and really it was all kind of hinged on this one thought that I had when looking at it, which is that we have Tapu Koko and we have one future Paradox Mon. Like, the yep. combination that the Pokemon company did not want you to have of Tapu Koko and an entire team of, of future Paradox Mons, uh, and you get Tapu Koko, I don't know if this was first pick because it's reordered, um, and then you don't draft at least like three. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just think that's kind of uh, sad. I don't think you I think need it three. Can be kind of bait sometimes because a lot yeah. of them are so weak to ground. I think Terra Coco would alleviate that and help the rest of the team not be that weak to ground. Yeah. But like, I think Lando is a really good partner with Coco. Yeah. No, I, I think that's true. Um, so that you don't have to be like, oh no, I'm strengthening the opponent's electric type mons. You have a, one of the most consistent ground type switches. For sure. Um, also one of the most sorry, one of the most consistent electric switches and one of the most consistent ground switches, just because the double immunities are so good for that type of team. That's Maybe setup, yeah. they're like over the Skarmory, there was um there was an opportunity to get another Iron Mon there. Yeah. Not that it had to be like Moth or I don't know, it could have maybe been I don't know, Valiant was open at the time, or maybe Iron Leaves, Iron Crown, for example. Um, you're really dipping into um, oh, lethal said the ground they, they weakness. Past Valiant, so because didn't Valiant not go into like round three or four? Maybe. And the, yeah, so that means that if he, if he did Coco round one and then yeah. didn't take Valiant, but I don't I don't think it's a bad idea to do ta to do Coco than Lando. Um, yep. But also, I actually would have said maybe Valiant over Boulder if it was still available. Uh, I think Boulder is kind of a fraud, but Boulder's a fraud. Wow. I would I think, never say that. I think so. I think he is. I think I think he's a little bit of a fraud. I don't think he's mm -hmm. bad, but I think for like all the hype that he gets, like I think he's a little bit of a fraud. True. I do think some of the hype comes with how good it is with Terra. Yeah, and maybe. not having Terra here might not be that great. Yeah. But like 124 speed with isn't it isn't it Spadef like over a hundred? 108. I mean it's not frail. It doesn't want to eat an earthquake. No, but I, you have I, a wide range of things that you can swords dance on. The and thing that I think is a little everything. I think the thing that it's a little fraudulent about though is that it kind of requires that sword stance. Like it, it, like it just doesn't hit as hard as you think it does. Like until it gets the sword stance. I think between swords dance and choice band though, you're never worried about hitting hard. Maybe. I mean, I, I haven't used it, but I've just I've just experienced playing against it that I've just ended up not being. Like, like, in the matches where I, like, didn't respect it, I've done better. Because I'm just like, oh, wait, what if I just stand in front of this and take the hit and get it to, like, 25% and then it doesn't want to stay in front of anything with priority? <laughs> it's yeah. like, okay. And that's fair. And, that, yeah. Honestly, kudos to you, though. That's how you deal with something that has to set up, is you just trade with it as it either sets up or 
hits you and doesn't kill you. Yeah. And then you revenge it later. That, that's just how you deal with it, yeah. realistically. So, not I mean, every it's a new mon. It's a new mon. It might it might not be a fraud, but that that's like that that's one of the mons that for me right now, until I'm like see something different, which I I could I could yeah, my mind could be changed. Uh, it's one of the ones that is on my fraud list of like yep. I, I don't think it's as good as people say. Yep. Um, looking at the defensive core, um, we have very standard Skarm Bliss. Like wow, yeah, <laughs> we did it, Skarmory Blissy once again. Um, I do think. The team could have used. Uh, I was going to say actually a better spinner, but I didn't see the Mega Blastoise there. Yeah, yeah. Mega Blastoise. I'm always a fan of Dude, Mega Blastoise. The Bramble Gast, man. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. A better spinner. <laughs> Bramble Gast is fine. Yeah. Um, Articuno hey, you know, has kind of become Defog Neon's too. signature. Yeah. Yeah, you're not worried about hazards. And Lando Defog. Yeah, well, you got a lot. Yeah, you're and never worried about Defog. having more yeah, hazards on your side between yeah. multiple Defogs, multiple spinners, and Cinderace. Yeah, I don't think Azure are an issue at all. It's fine. Um, Articuno's kind of become Neon's Curse signature Articuno? pick. We are likely to see Terra curse Articuno this season. Was it Terra any of the other seasons? No, this is I think the first time you had a Terra captain. So that that works because then then it can because it, it it flopped last season because it was it was predictable and you knew how to counter with Terra yeah. though. Now it's back oh. to being fresh and unpredictable. True. Now everybody's brains shut off and we're like, oh, what do I do? Yeah. I get honestly it's kind of funny how that, that, that worked out pretty well that like you get the 19 point terra cap, but like, hey, you know what? Perfect opportunity to throw that that Articuno terra cap, see how it works. Yep. I agree. Um once again, I don't think I I think we went from your tier into your thoughts directly and I didn't get to say yeah. I didn't get to say my <laughs> I think I, I think you've put more thought into yours too, so like I think it's more fair that your yours comes after a little bit of a discussion. Yeah, that's fair. Um, <laughs> you what did you have this at? I forgot. It's off the cuff. Uh, I said six. Okay, I, I have it at seven. It's probably better than a six. I have it at seven. I don't think it's that big of a difference. I do think it's it's very standard, and that the the defensive backbone of like Skarm, Bliss, and um, potentially Lando as a defensive option makes it um, a little abusable. Like things can set up on on a lot of these things. If you are if you are immune to fighting, like a ghost type, for example, is immune to the body press and immune to the seismic toss, and can kind of just sub on a lot of the defensive. Yeah core which is really tough because then your offensive mon has to trade with a substitute so there's definitely potential to be abused i really like the speed there's a 130 a 124 and a 119 and i think that might be the fastest team or the team with the highest caps that we've seen like most teams don't even reach cinderace which is his third fastest mon his average is up here, but it's probably brought down by a couple. Yeah, there's a Diplin and stuff on there, so yeah. it's like... Um, but, like, just having those three to cap it out means that, um, similar to Torn, Coco can be bulky and not have to worry about always being timid. Um, and Cinderace can even be, like, a... Um, it can run Adamant more confidently because Boulder's always there to back it up and stuff. Yeah, I do think it's. I do think Terra Coco isn't necessarily it right here. The opportunity cost for running Terra Coco is not running Terra Lando, which we did have. I don't think we, we you and I, had this conversation, but there was a conversation in general recently. No, I, I was, I was about, talking about. Yeah, I think you were there about Terra Lando, and I think Coco and Great Tusk kind of fall into the same category where it's like they can all Terra and do their jobs better, but some mons like get completely new roles and new win conditions that they can utilize with Terra. And I don't think any of them, like either Coco or Lando really do that. Maybe yeah. Lando is definitely better at setting up. Yeah. You can just is, play, is Boulder, if it's a ground weak. Illegal? Boulder is not Terra legal. If you, if it's a ground weak team and you Terra ground rock polish, for example, and you just earthquake your way through victory, uh, through to victory, then I mean, cool, but that's very matchup specific. So I won't yeah. get too much more into that. I like the team, honestly. It it seems a little bit passive outside of the top like four. I mean, okay, there are four offensive mods. Maybe it's not passive. No, I don't know. I don't Maybe I'm true. underrating the team. Maybe I'm I'm looking at um, 
looking at the wrong things. I think it's going to be strong. I don't know what else to say. It's yeah. um, this is this is one that I think I have to see in action. Like, you have to see how well yeah. Ulysses Skarmory works out in in practice. Yeah. Who who yeah, there's nothing that's whose slots do me. those do these mons take offensively? Like, who who do they have to fill? Because again, like these these are these are the what is that five and six or six and seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, six, uh, five and six. Okay, so you could theoretically bring your top. Uh, six mons and have both of these mons on here. But, you know, maybe you're trying yeah. to fit Blastoise on there. Are you bringing both of these mons and dropping one of these? You know, matchup dependent. Um, but also, are there scenarios where you don't have room for the Skarmory or the Skarmory looks really bad in this matchup? Okay, how much yeah. weight is being put on Blissey and Lando now to, to handle all the defense? And because yeah. it also, it, the only fairy that it has is the Coco, and Coco, I think, is sort of one of the fake fairies a little bit. Um, yep. Especially as a terror. Yeah, you're going to be relying on um, Blissey and Skarm just for their stats a lot. So yeah. this is kind of the opposite problem that Sweets had, right? Where where Sweets had good type mons with like reliable recovery and this um but like not great stats yeah. just relied on their types. Whereas Skarmbliss yeah. just has stats and they're <laughs> like, I'm just gonna blanket check every special attacker, I'm gonna blanket yeah. check every physical attacker and hope that you don't I mean Skarm have tech is also against type me. to be fair, but <laughs> Yeah, it does have good typing too. Yeah. Um But I know what you mean. But yeah, it's like it's less abusable by things like choice band choice specs, more abusable by utility tech like substitute like taunt right um and things that will just um break down the purely defensive sets that skarm and bliss often have yeah but that's true of pretty much every like kind of i don't want to say stall core because it's just blissey and skarmory but like in general why it's worse in drafts is because like yeah you just bring taunt on someone and like a lot of times yeah. you can just kind of shut down the entire plan <laughs> like i mean not necessarily yeah. true for skarmory because it, it can do the like the body press sets or like something like that like it, it can run some secret you know offense yeah. stuff um i, I think i also but... underrated um the pivots on this team i kind of forgot yeah, that like blastoise blissey flip turn can can teleport. pivot around too I think I'm going to, after we talked about it, I'm going to bump it up a little to 7.5. What were you at before? I had 7 before. I think 7.5 is pretty fair for it. Yeah. Um, I think, I, 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 I want to go up to 7, but... Yeah, I think it'll be tough to bring, like, Frail Coco, Frail Boulder, and Frail Cinderace on the same team. So, therefore, Lando will have to be a stopgap. Yeah. Maybe you'll have to bring, like four of the defensive mons with Lando, Skarm, Bliss, Blastoise, for example. Not yeah. that Blastoise is defensive, but it's bulky, right? Yeah. In yeah. order to facilitate, like, Coco Boulder, <clears throat> and then you leave Cinderace at home. Which isn't the big deal, because, again, you have so many fast mons. Right. So, yeah. That's my thoughts. Um, We have, like, seven left, so... <laughs> yeah. Go. Cool. Uh, Kai Guy! Who is this in Discord? Is that the name? Yeah, Kai Guy. Okay. Um, Check him out on YouTube. Kai Guy YT. Oh shit, wait, I have this as a 9. <laughs> this is my other 9. Um, I think the team is really good. I have it at 8.5 actually. Or sorry, I changed it from 8.5 to an 8. Oh. Uh, yeah, so I guess I'll go first and then you yeah. let me know okay. what you think is better than I'm not giving it credit for. Um, First of all, Snow Splash with Slow King Bear Tick is one of my favorite. Um, I don't want to say gimmicks, but yeah, like Kurum, like you're, like Fennec is saying, Kurum Slow King plus the Terra Bear Tick. I think Bear Tick is slept on. I think this mod is really good. Yeah, I mean Terra um, especially. It, yeah, it's a with, mod that that doesn't have a Terra tax on its point value, but does get considerably better with Terra. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I like it a lot. Um, Terra Scizor also, I think, is very good. These two captains are just really, really threatening. Mm -hmm. The problem is they're both threatening physically, and Sneasler is already the main, I don't want to say main physical threat, but, like, between Sneasler, Bulu, Terra Scizor, Terra Bear Tick, even, like, Obstagoon, um, I feel like teams are already hyper-prepping yeah. for physical. So, well, Sword so Stance, on. Scizor, Bear Tick might... These are both Knock, Terra Band, right? Kurum and Sneasler, yeah. Yeah, okay. I was um, what else do I think? I think the defensive backbone is really strong. Even if you yeah. uh, don't include, like, Bulu and Kurum in the defensive core, which they totally can. Um, even just Slow King, Moltres, yeah, Scizor, yeah. I think it's really good. Like, the fact that it's it's flexible between Kurum, Bulu, Slow King, Scizor, Moltres. And I... 
you can count Sanaconda if you want. Um, let's say you run two out of those five defensively and the rest are just like bulky offense or something. Even if it's like max fizz dev bulu with like life orb slow king or something that not that that's necessarily the best but you know you can run things like that yeah. i do think that scissor being the only steel type is kind of rough but it's not the end of the world and I, it's hard to run a second steel with scissor honestly but yeah. it's four times weakness is supported really well with uh, with slow king and moltres so it's really it's really fine um, there's some Did solid this team have a flying basic resist resists? besides flying Mega resist Manectric? Is Manectric, yeah. So that's something that uh, I didn't like. Is yeah. there's the I just only, noticed it because um, the steel type is is the only steel type is Scissor, which is neutral with flying. Yeah, it, well, similar to what you said, there's also only one ground resist. Sorry, sorry. There also yeah. Sneasel resist ground. My bad. But like, there's only one. Defensive Wait, ground resist, uh, rock resist. resist. Did I say ground? Yeah, I meant rock. Rock resist. Um, when you have Sneasler. Moltres, yeah, when you have Moltres and Kiram. Yeah, it's uh, you definitely want something that's more consistent to switch into rock types than Sandaconda yeah. and Sneasler. That's true. Um, but there's like so many setup options here. Sneasler can obviously set up or run band. Um, you can set up with like DD loaded dice, Kiram, SD Bulu. Honestly, Calm Mind Bulu is good. Same thing with Slow King. Multiple setup options. Scizor technically a... Curse is an option, but Sword Stance is obviously the main one. SD Bear Tag, Coil Santa mods, Conda. Right? It is ten mods, yeah. Is there is there a place where you could do? Because like, I don't know what Obstagoon is doing necessarily. I, I haven't really thought yeah. about it. Um, but like maybe you turn. Sandaconda and Obstagoon into like a steel type or or a, uh, or another ground type like a better ground yep. type. Maybe you turn Mega Manectric into a into a steel type. Like I, this is not. I don't know who is drafted and who like what point values add up. But like maybe you do something like a like a Don fan or I think Don fans drafted, but you know what I mean. Like so, like something yeah. like a Don fan oh, ground type. Or even like Mudsdale or something. Mudsdale's not drafted. You get like Mudsdale and then and then like Copperaja or something. You yeah, know, you're adding onto yeah. the physical attack, I guess. But at the same time, like that, that's like kind of like spreading okay. out those points a little better. And you're getting your flying resist. You're getting your rock resist. Um, you're getting just a couple of things. Just so you know, even if it's just padding the 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 matchup spread, you know, yep. it's better than I... seeing, oh look, the only rock resists or and like rock and flying resists are low tier. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think um, looking at the low tiers, I think Manectric is like, it's just a six pointer. Honestly, I think I'm not a huge Manectric believer, but I'm also not a Mega Manectric hater. <laughs> I, I'm i actually, especially at this point tier where it's six points it's for a Mon that just has good offensive stats and Intimidate. It's actually pretty good, I think. Yeah. Or I, it's point I, value. I have no bias towards it. Like, I just don't know what it is at all, really. What? Really? I've just never really seen it. Like, cause okay, it what does base like a... do? Think about that, and then give it more stats. Okay, let's and see. Uh, I still don't know. What? I don't know. Right, like, well... it blends in with all the other electric, like random electric types. Like the okay, it's one thirty-five speed to start. Yeah, I see that. Um, but the only coverage it really gets is like signal beam and overheat. So basically, the same as all the other electric types. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's one thirty-five speed yeah. with intimidate. Well, yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I don't want to. I don't want to say that I'm like. That I'm shitting on it because I, I actually like I really don't. Yeah, I'm, I don't okay. think anything my point, negatively of it. But my point is that for what it gives you, six points is not a high opportunity cost. Yeah. As opposed to Obstagoon, that realistically that points? isn't doing much for you here. I think Obstagoon is great. I don't know. Just what for that the record. <laughs> okay. Well, let's get this guy off the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> someone, someone else join it. <laughs> Listen, if I've never used it, which which electric types, I probably don't because there are other electric types I like to use. Uh, and normal types, I probably don't because there's other normal types I like to use. Those are the ones I know the least about because I yeah. have the same <laughs> ones that I use over and over again. All good. So I think Obstagoon is really is good and is has been proven to be worth the points. Maybe like 9 to 11, I'd say, is pretty fair for it. Um, but I don't think you need it here. I think between Sandaconda and Obstagoon, you could trade those up for... 
something like you said that resists rock and resists flying. Mm -hmm. um, so the Manectric isn't your only flying resist, and like Sneasler isn't your rock resist, right? Like those, yeah. especially on the Moltres team, you really need something for the Stone Edges and the sure. Rock Slides. So yeah, that that's where I would improve. I also yeah. think the speed tiers are really inconsistent. If you want to run there is Unburdened Sneasler. Yeah, there is a big gap, but if you want to run Unburdened Sneasler, um, then you're not, you're basically running a team, a five mon team until Sneasler can win. And then at that point, it's not even a 120 speed mon. It's similar to Regieleki. It's just a yeah. fastest mon, <laughs> right? So the 120 is kind of fake if you're running um if you're running on burden it's just fast enough right yeah um so unless you're running banned that 120 speed isn't actually present and if you're running on burden like i said it's dependent on the terrain being up or you just using the item regardless of the terrain right like, and like manectric is also inconsistent and you don't want to bring manectric every game yeah. so you're relying on like bullet punch scissor and Slush Rush Bear Tick. But again, Slush Rush Bear Tick means that you have to go from Sloking into Bear Tick, right? You have to Chili Reception at some point in order for Bear Tick to have speed. And as soon right. as that snow is gone, or if you didn't have the opportunity to do that, again, you don't have that speed and it's fake. It's not actually there like when you need it. Um, and then there's the big drop off from Sneasler at 120 all the way down to um, yeah, 95 with Kiram. Um, Moltres is what, 90? Yeah. I think Obstagoon is around 90 as well. 95. Um, yeah. So there, there's a lot of, um, I think 95 is just a bad spot to, a bad spot to clump. Weirdly yeah. enough, I think it's worse to clump at 95, between 90 and 95, than it is to clump between 80 and 85. I agree. Because there's so many mons between the 80 and 85 speed tier that no longer need to invest at all. Yeah. Right, they're just gonna say, "Well, their ninety-five mons are just faster than mine, so I'm just full bulk, full bulk all the time." And if, like and, my Rotom, and, my Goldengo don't care about your Kiram speed because you're gonna be faster. Yeah. Well, I'll say um, what I like about it though, overall. Yep. Yeah. And this is like, because this was again just kind of at a glance, looking at the mons and less at the, like the, the stats. Um, I like that the. I mean, you have your very obvious synergies here so you have your terrain with the sneezler you have your snow with the q room and the uh bear tick um what i like is that this team well he kind of protected himself with the grabbing the moltres with the scissor because moltres True. is one of the worst matchups for scissor just period True. So there's one I'm a big fewer fan. fireflies. Yeah, I'm a big fan of like drafting your worst matchup for your like one of your key mons that you're gonna be using. So I think yeah, that's I like a, a synergy, not in the sense that it's like they go well together offensively, but in the sense that it's like that is off the table. You never have to deal with the Moltres. So you yep. can more confidently rely on Scizor for that kind of stuff more, knowing that that's one less matchup that you're gonna be like, Well, I can't really bring Scizor to do this, you know? Yeah, I actually um, agree. That's that's a good point. So that I like. Um the what else what do you think about the terrain on the team i think in general i like the uh i mean obviously you have the this uh sneezer with the with the grassy terrain if you need it i also think that it's nice that you can run like av sloking and have the passive recovery from bulu um because yeah. i've always liked that with because because i did uh rilla with raging bolt and um iron treads on my most recent team that i ran and that was really nice because those two ran av a lot in, in a lot of matchups just being sure. able to basically have lefties plus av on, on yep. mine so like when, they're, too. when they're running av and just don't take damage you know like like sloking mm -hmm. i mean sloking probably i mean i mean might not be running it as much as um i mean it likes it for sure but like if you want to run truly reception it might not be running it a lot but even still it's okay. like if you're not running lefties maybe maybe you're running rocky helmet maybe you're running um a berry for for some for something um there's a lot of reasons why you might want the uh, the looking just get that passive recovery, and with with Sneasler and Kyurem who are just kind of like nukes at the right time, 
you're not really worried about your enemy getting that passive recovery. They're not the kinds of mons where it's like you're going to have a lot of these like close rolls or like just kind of like slowly pressuring somebody down that if you're suddenly against a regen core or um, something with just lefties or whatever and now they're also getting grassy terrain every time they come in it makes it harder for you to chip down like i don't think you're going to run into that problem when you just have the immediate threat of specs cure room or, or like or ban sneezer mm -hmm. or not even ban but just like sword stance sneezer coming in late i think um so first of all to uh backtrack a little bit before i think we close it out i think the dream scenario of cure room with grassy terrain and snow up is actually really terrifying yeah, that's nice. Because you just can't hit it physically, and it's getting passive recovery, and it doesn't take rocks damage if it has boots, or it's have double double recovery with like left user, whatever, right? Yeah. Um, that's kind of the dream scenario that I think the team is going for. But to the point, I actually think that there are scenarios where your your opponent out heals your Sneasler's KO ranges. Maybe this where Sneasler, yeah. A lot of the time. A lot of the time, if you, like, resist close combat, for example, um, plus two poison jab or gunk shot or whatever isn't quite enough to kill what you're hitting, assuming it's, like, fizz death. Yeah. Or in, so, a, in a worst case so scenario, in, you miss a gunk shot, and then they get more recovery. Yeah, exactly. And it might just put it out of the range, even if you have yeah. plus two. Yeah. Now, I don't think that's normally a problem if you have a decent hazard game, but the only hazard setter on the entire team is Sandaconda. Oh, really yeah so yeah, not weird. only yeah. are you just not dealing chip damage but you're also potentially boiling the game down to a point where sneezler is left and able to sword stance but everything has 100 percent hp yeah you that's know? true especially like you said into regen cores or um uh, and i could see that being a really big problem into mons with sturdy as well that are often seen to counter Sneasler. So I don't know. I, I think that could be. That's kind of just food for thought. I don't know if that's. Well, it's something that could also be fixed problem. by what we were talking about, too. Like, like re, re uh, allocating. Upgrading the these, Sandaconda. These middle tiers, maybe getting some of those like hazard setter options yep. for that. Yep. And again, to be clear, I don't hate the Mega Manectric, but if there is another option to like trade up the Obstagoon, Sandaconda, and Manectric for. Like you said, Mudsdale, or even if there's just a, a higher tier ground type than that, something that's more bringable than Sandaconda, and then a replacement for Manectric or a replacement for Obstacoon or whatever. I think that is a pretty, pretty easy fix to make. So again, uh, I don't remember if I said my thing. I think I did, but mm -hmm. I think this is an eight out of ten, with pretty clear drawbacks, but also very apparent win conditions and um, and strengths. Yeah, I, and said, I think we kind of I agree said... on that. I said nine originally, uh, j just in the context of like us kind of lowering the average a little bit, maybe I'd drop it down to an eight, but I would still say that like, even with those flaws, like just in the fact that like it can be, it can be fixed like relatively easily. Um, I still think that I just like the team overall, yep. with, like what it can do. I think it has high potential if it's played well. Yep. Very fair. So, all right. Zathandus. All righty. ID. What did I say here? Uh, so this is oh, I, have, I have a bad explanation for this one so you go <laughs> okay this is one of my favorite teams that i've seen zathandis draft but i don't think that makes it one of my favorite teams that i've seen in the division you know where i think <clears throat> historically zathandis um is known for just picking his favorites and i love that you know picking the roaring moon and the mega charizard y and the the Backscalibur and like the cool dragons and like the shit, the, you know, the, the childhood fantasy, you know, I love that he, that he goes out and does that. And I think that this team is one of the teams that still fits that identity that he has, but doesn't take away as much synergy and as much like competitive integrity as some of his past teams have before. What do you, um, so I think there's a lot of potential for the team there are still obvious weaknesses, and and we'll get into that in a minute. But um, I had I kind of flip flopped between like six and like five and a half out of ten. I had I think six. Where was it? Yeah, it's six. I said 
my explanation was another one that feels off for some reason, but overall <laughs> the combo of Moon slash Chiyu on offense and Zap on defense is great. So I yeah. think the idea was like, this is one another one where it's like, I just kind of glance at it and say like, wow, these are a lot of good mods. There's probably something that I'm missing that's like really weak about this team. Um, yeah. But realistically, it's like you do have two win buttons, like just with these two. Yeah, there's and, insane. And, and Zapdos denies career. so many mons defensively. Yeah. Geezing is another one that's like, it's not a high point mon and it's not always, like it's not like the coverall defensive option for everything, but there are a lot of matchups where it can just be like the, you can't use this mon until Geezing's gone. Yep, you know, very like, reliable. and so like that's also nice. So like between these two, defensively, Scissor being able to do either if you want it to be like that defensive denier or a really offensive threat. Like I think like this kind of just being a puzzle piece in the middle, and then the, these two being really rob and Quag too. Quag's another one that's like can just shut down specific mods. I think Quag is worse in in uh, the newer in Gen Nine now because Trailblaze is just a really common coverage move that's like. Like, not only, like, okay, now you have to eat a ground type, but like you're also giving them an inherent benefit by letting them boost off of you if you die. Um, so I think that's a little worse than just, you know, somebody bringing grass knot. Um, but, uh, so, 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 but quite, I mean, even still, like, I think Quag can be good with this team, even if all it's doing is forcing you to bring that move. You know, maybe you're between grass knot and a different coverage move on another mon, and you're forced to bring grass knot. Oh, Quag didn't even come. Okay. That's still a benefit yep. for the team. Um, true. I'm looking just because we were talking about it with the other team, but like, is Zap the only flying resist here with three grass types? <laughs> it is the only flying resist. I expect to see Terra Steel Quag for the most part. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it does feel bad to have like to to Terra Steel in um, potential Sun. Like just looking at yeah. the Chiyu, the Roaring Moon, the Zapdos, the Scovillain. Yeah. And the Whimsicott, like I'm imagining this and the Cherim. This is he's trying to go for a Sun team. It's it'll probably be manual Sun Whimsicott. Yeah, pretty good amount of the time. I think maybe Geezing gets Sunny Day as well. I'm not too sure. Too sure. One well, also losing your. But honestly, it's hard context. looking at the top three of like Roaring Moon, Mega Scissor, Zapdos. Whatever comes after that doesn't really matter yeah that's what, that's what i was saying like, like you can't just ignore that these these ones exist like, yeah they're <laughs> so so reliable just those yeah. three in general and and chiyu um is just a great one of the best recipients of pivoting that scissor and zapdos will do yeah wheezing is just extremely reliable as a mid-tier blanket check to a lot of different things actually like mm -hmm. blanket to a lot of ground type Grass physical types. Obviously, all of them are physical, but like ground types, poison types, um, dragon types. Uh, honestly, even like rock types and fire types. Maybe not fire types because they can flare blitz and that's just strong. But like Stone Edge doesn't actually hit Weezing that hard. Yeah, and that can often pain split through them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, one of the better Rocky helmet holders too. For sure. Um, great status, especially especially with a team on a team with like Zapdos and Moon who might be baiting out a lot of triple axles. Like being able to just true. Geezing in. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, nice. between Weezing and Mega Scizor, you're not actually threatened by yeah. by physical ice at all. Yeah. Well, it's not that, yeah, I mean, not, like, not there, that there's Weezing a lot of resists it, but just in the sense that like, you don't want to click Triple Axel into Rocky Helmet Geezing. <laughs> yeah. Now, looking at the, the drawbacks, I think it's another team that just suffers from not having good Terra Captains. Yeah. And, and less Whimsicott. If you're running, like, Chlorophyll Whimsicott or something, I don't think it really gets that much out of Terra. No, I don't think so. It's either. and again, you're not it's not necessary to use all of your Terra points in order to like have a good team or a good Terra duo. Um but nineteen out of twenty five is losing a lot of value there. Yeah. I would have and liked to have seen maybe even like Zapdos as a Terra that maybe is an underrated Terra Captain for sure. Yeah, maybe upgrading like Honchcrow, Cherim, Scovillain into a 15 point captain with Quag over Whimsicott. Yeah. Um, the thing is, I, that, that's, I noticed that's that thought. I think both of these uh, captains are also maybe, and I don't know what he's thinking when he's, when he's drafting them, but both of them have a four times weakness that he might have just been like, well. Might as well shut the four times weakness, right? Like, True. With Quagsire, if he's my defensive mon, I can get rid of the four times grass weakness. Whimsicott, you can get rid of that four times poison weakness. Or maybe just get rid of one of your other weaknesses so you can guarantee that yeah. you get something up that you wouldn't normally get up. I don't know. That could be part of the thought process. And it's actually funny because, like, I mean, well, Quag is the only water type on the team. 
and but it also has a four times week. Yeah, and 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 so I'm thinking like like one of the you said like Terra Steel would be a good option for it. But like I don't really even think that you necessarily need steel for this mod. You could just go Terra Water, and then yeah, honestly, and, and then like at least you're not four times because then Trailblaze is suddenly much less threatening. Like you know, it's still two times weak, but like you can tank that if it's like a coverage move for someone. Um, so, so I would actually almost expect it to, if you're strictly running it defensively, to just run Terra Water a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah. But then you're losing your ground side too. So I don't know. I, I agree that I don't think yeah. these are the best Terra captains. You can probably re- remove some stuff yeah. around. I also here. think, I also think it's another team that is really stacked on Fizdef, and is going to have to rely on like Spidef Mega Scizor a lot. Yeah. Or Spidef Zapdos, which isn't the end of the world. Like Zapdos on this team is kind of just relegated to pivot role, and that's yeah. fine. For the most I've, part, I've had a lot of success with Zap just being a defensive mon. <laughs> like, yeah. There's things. there's nothing wrong with like just having defensive Zapdos. It's yeah. really good at punishing like U turns and spreading status around. Yeah, especially in that and deck honestly, where you're if you can a lot anyway. Yeah, and if you can spread Thunder Wave, or sorry, not Thunder Waves, but like Static Procs on the yeah. Chiyu team, you're oh, chilling. That's insane. You love that, yeah. right? Your fast pivot is coming in. U turning on the like if the Torn T comes in, U turns on the Zapdos, for example. Your Chi is just gonna blow it up now. Even if it's AV, it like it can't take one and like focus blast it back or whatever if it's scarf. Right? It just kind of like dies now. And actually, another another point, just like the uh, the other team, I don't remember whose it was. It might have been the last one that we looked at. Was it? It was uh, Mega Scizor with Zapdos. Like having the Zapdos on your team again. That's another mod that's like Scizor doesn't want to just be bullet punching into his Zapdos, right? Yeah. So, yeah. True. Not that's having really to do with point. that is huge. Yeah, I do think often when we see things like um, Mega Scizor Lando or Mega Scizor Gliscor or um, et cetera, like things that, that double up on four times weaknesses, there's often something in between those two four times weaknesses that resists both of them. Yeah. So, for example, you might see like a, um, you might see a Vulcanian between Gliscor and Scizor mm-hmm. because it like four times resists fire and ice for example just just as that and there's no middleman here on this team yeah right there's no there are good fairy resists and yeah, like, like and there's good can support for moon answer the fairies yeah there's good support for moon but it's like if something has fire and grass coverage like fire grass ice uh you're kind of just boned right yeah so yeah i don't know i i do think there's a lot of ways for zathandis to win Zapdos is always a mon that can just win in a lot of positions. Roaring Moon, one of the better Dragon Dancers. Mega Scizor can just have Sword Stance on any set and win. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And Chi Yu is kind of him. Yeah. So Chi-Yu. I think there's a lot of good. I think um, it's it's just the style of draft that, that Zephantis likes to have that that makes me appreciate it from afar, but not kind of similar to some of the other ones. Not rate it well in the same metric as the other team yeah all right so well, let's keep still kind on. of a five and a half for me i forget what i said i said six i think you said maybe? six yeah um and then okay so shuckle shuckle supremacy what did i say i said i said for this one let me glance at it again i said i said five i might bump it up um five yeah. i think it's a little better than five yeah i, I like think six six and a half i think too. is pretty fair I said um, a lot of good synergies and, and some yeah. bad ones, and I think the I think I was like kind of hyper focusing on like some certain things that I didn't really like, like uh, salt cure with grassy terrain, just kind of like mm, that's true. Some of the purpose of it. Um, Sarah Aura I think kind of Garganacle. I think Garganacle has kind of been um, in draft. I don't think salt cure is even Garganacle's like main role anymore i think people have kind of figured out covert cloak just kind of counters yeah it. that's true you know if anything it's just going to be running rocks recover maybe body press maybe like mm-hmm. an ice punch or something i don't know like it, it has other things to do than salt cure but i agree it it makes it look like as an option it makes the option look worse yeah and treads i i ran treads with with rillaboom recently um and it's not the worst thing to, to have to do because you have high horse, horsepower on it at least. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it actually doesn't hate running special either if it, if it has to in certain sets. Um, but that's another thing just to keep in mind, you know, like if like maybe that's a problem for you. But I also I like the Rilla with the with the Zero Aura too. 
to to cut that a little bit. Yep. Um, but the Terra's there, I still don't know You're how sold I am on it. I, I, it's not that I'm not a believer. I, th- I think it can be good, and I, and I think if we're not talking about drafts where you have two Terra captains and one of them is 18 points, that it's it's certainly a completely valid Terra option. I do think there's a little bit of an opportunity cost, and I think it's and I think it's just because of that lack of Terra blast that it doesn't really help you with the coverage that sometimes it might need, but it has good coverage. So it's not like it's completely lacks coverage that you can tear it into, but it might be like, you know, for some physical mons, sometimes they want to have that terror blast just to be like, all right, there's yeah. the mon that walls me and I got my setup and, and I really need to be able to one hit KO this thing. And if yeah, you well, don't though, have I think that the problem is it really, it, being an issue. it really would rather like bulk up over comb mine and without click, like without being special or being mixed in some way, it doesn't have ground coverage. It doesn't have grass. It, like it can't beat the ground yeah. types that come in on it, right? Which yeah. so it becomes over reliant on Terra flying or grass to dodge and heal through the uh, ground moves. Yeah, I do think that um, Rillaboom will help it a lot. Be yeah, able definitely. to like set up more often. Same with Mew. I do think that those two mons appreciate the terrain a lot so that they can be more offensive and more greedy with their setup yeah so that they can and you overcome like, have to run those stats. yeah exactly but like the the base stats on offensive stats for the team are pretty abysmal like the only one that has over 120 is in either offensive stat is rillaboom yeah and boom is great but having your your best offensive mon be like Mono grass type and not a Terra Captain. Yeah, is, think, is not a great Rilla, look. Rilla in Nat decks definitely suffers if he's not a Terra Cap. Yeah, he because he just there are, again. You're comparing it to past generations where Mons just get this obscene coverage, and it's like the only thing that he gets out of Nat decks is like superpower. Yeah, and it's like, and then you're still just like, okay, well now I still can't hit steel flying. I still can't hit um, any flying. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess flying Joe, yeah. Um, but it, 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 I, I loved running Terra, Rilla, and Nat decks because, because just being able to put that last piece in, where it's like I got my setup and now like you can't wall me because I have the extra thing. Even if I'm just threatening it, the Terra Fire or the Terra Electric, um, and you just don't think that you can just guaranteed put this mon in in front of me. I would almost think it just because again, like I wouldn't say that I'm a, I'm a Terra Zera non-believer. But I would almost rather see just because 18 points, you could do Rilla with a six pointer or something, right? Or not even a six pointer. You could do Rilla with a, what is it, up to 25? Yeah, with an 11 you, you pointer. Could do, yeah, you could do an 11 pointer. You can do Terra Mega Sable. I know you can. Wow. Um, no, you can. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I would, I would even rather see Rilla with, with like Chinchino. Like, like one of, like, I don't know what, like, I don't know. Maybe Scyther's good with Terra. I don't well, know. I think I, like, Okay, I think his gimmick is he wants to tear a shuckle because yeah. he likes shuckle, right? So I'm not yeah. going to hold that against him. No, but yeah, I, no. in an ideal world, one of Scyther or Chintino would just be a seven pointer instead of the eight pointer, and you would tear that with Zara. That would be my my attitude. Oh yeah, you could fit. Wait. Oh yeah, 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 you could. Yeah. Yeah, with a seven pointer. I, so. I, I so that, that's more just me thinking of like I think Terra Rilla is really good. Um, mm. So like if you wanted to keep the team and then do it like that you could do that um but yeah that's fine if he wants to do the terror shuckle that's fine. yeah yeah i think um i think mew is going to have to be more of a defensive setup on like it'll have to be bulky calm mind or yeah. like the cosmic power stored power set nobody really more in order to take advantage of the grassy terrain over like dragon dance just because yeah. i don't think it's base stats without being really bulky will really um I don't know, like the whole team just doesn't have high base stats. So I think you'd have to rely on multiple setup um, turns, getting like plus three or plus four with the combines instead of getting yeah. like plus one with Dragon Dance. I'm also noticing that, that the only Mon on this team that has recovery outside of the terrain, I guess Sableye does. I, I didn't think of Sableye. But like you have you have a couple of defensive Mons that like, you know, Mew would have, like if, if we're talking in a scenario where, where Mew isn't, running defensive your other defensive options aren't really able to recover on command like treads if you wanted to be like an av set there um tenacruel is it is a mon that like wants to be a swap but doesn't really heal um and then but he, he actually just said in the chat that he just traded guard for primarina 
So guard. Oh, is okay. <laughs> Which is told I mean, you I he, like he, shuckle. <laughs> he, he didn't have a fairy, so it's, I don't hate that. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. And then you're not relying on Tentacruel as your only water type. Yeah. Which I think maybe you can, can drop Tentacruel cool. at some point too. I do think between I, treads. I don't hate Tentacruel. No, I don't think I. I don't hate it either, and I actually like it in the grassy terrain as well. Yeah. Often it wants to be like a rocky helmet, similar to the last theme, rocky helmet for the the triple axle users and stuff. Right. It is similar to to treads, though. You're right, because it's like treads also can come in on T spikes and spin them away. Yeah. But it's um, nice that you don't have to run spin treads. Yeah. Right. Like it, it's an option. So I similarly I don't hate it. You're right. Um, I do think there is a little bit of a misconception about running ground weak mons on the grassy terrain team because you can't earthquake them anymore yeah like almost everything gets high horsepower now yeah. there's only like what lando it's just a knowledge check <laughs> like if somebody remembers to bring high horsepower instead yeah it is a knowledge check you're right um and even even Which i guess it's fine even some of the mons that don't get high horsepower get uh get a headlong rush <laughs> it's just like all right that's even stronger. yeah true um but no, I, I know what you mean. I, I actually can't really think of many that, that don't. Like, like Lando. But Lando can do Stomping Tantrum, which isn't good, but it's I think yeah, it's still right. better than Quake. Uh, um, does it have? I don't know. It has Earth Power regardless. Yeah. Same no, as, it, um, it definitely has Stomping Tantrum, but it doesn't have high horsepower, I don't think. Yeah. Um, same as Garchomp. It has Stomping Tantrum. Yeah, no high Garchomp. Horsepower. Right. It doesn't have high horsepower. I, th- I think Mammoth Swine has it, right? Yeah, it does. Yeah. But Garchomp also, like, could. Like, the, the, there's not that much opportunity cost just running a special chomp set in, in a lot yep. of cases if you're going against a team like that yep Especially i'm like, interested like if your Draco to see... swap is is the treads like he doesn't want to come in on earth power <laughs> that's true yeah i'm interested to see mega sableye though i don't think i've seen it used on um it too much success lately and i think it's actually interesting on a grassy terrain team yeah that's true because you can't hold your you can't hold lefties but you get the terrain yeah so yeah, I'm I am interested in seeing the team. I do think there's a lot of a lot of good parts here. I would have maybe liked to have seen something like an unburden for the terrain, but it's not that big a deal, honestly. Yeah. Um and your speed tiers are okay. Like between Zara down to Chinchino from the one forty three or the one fifteen, it's not the end of the world. Um you're always gonna have the fastest mon. Almost always gonna have the fastest mon with Zara. So you're actually chilling. I, I don't mind your speed. Yeah, I think there's a lot, a lot of good. I think the base stats are really low, um, and it's going to be just overly reliant on setup. But like the setup you have is really good, so yeah. I do expect you to do fairly well with this. Nice. All yeah. Right, next. Moving team. on. Carnvir. Carnvir. He actually first picked Terra Gyarados again, so he took last season off. If you remember season two. Um, he popped off with the Terra Gyarados and it like broke I records. That, I just remember that Terra Gyarados just like breaks. Like it's, it's super good. I have I have yeah. his team at, a, at an eight and I and I literally just said Terra Gyarados is nuts, and then I said Terra <laughs> Rabombi might suck, and then but it true. also doesn't true. matter because you're just running Terra Gyarados. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, and then and it's a good fire protection for Ferrothorn. So like having the Flash Fire Arcanine, you have the Mega Deancey, you have a and the Gyarados. You have Gudra. a lot of stuff to, to and Gudra. Yeah, you have a lot of stuff to protect that Ferrothorn, which I think is really nice. Um, yeah. And uh, and then you have you have good Rocks answers for the Arcanine and the and the Mega Beedrill and the and the Rabambi who don't want to be coming on Rocks. Like you have your Dawn fan there. Um, I mean, Don fans are really like your only removal. I don't think he's the worst thing to have as, as your. I'm not as a Don fan removal. believer. I've said it once and I'll say it again. I, I, think I really fine. don't think it's that great anymore. I mean, it's definitely not great anymore compared to what exists now in its place. Um, but, uh, and Rabami could still also, like, if you really wanted to, you could do Defog boots. Um, yep, that's true. And, uh, but yeah, there, there's, I, I like, I think it, I think it synergizes pretty well. Uh, I was trying to think of anything that doesn't like the psychic terrain. Maybe Extreme Speed Arcanine doesn't. Um, I don't think Mega Beedrill gets first impression, so I don't think he cares that much. Um, I will say I, I felt like Lele was a little bit out of place here. Yeah, that, that's what I was trying to think of it. Like, like, does it really make sense that we're like, what are we? Doing it is nice for? that you have two fairies. He has three with, fairies because Mega Dancy is kind of like an Amorous where it doesn't want to be your only fairy. He has three fairies. Oh, three fairies. Oh, yeah, Rabombi. Okay, yeah. well, I mean, it's honestly not even that bad to, yeah. <laughs> to triple up like that, especially if one is your Terra Captain and one is yeah. a Mega. 
I don't think the only weakness they share is steel, so. Yeah. That's a full um, weakness. But, like, you have Ferrothorn and Arcanine for yeah. steel, so. Yeah, you're fine there. I think you're actually chilling. And Gyarados and Mon, Gyarados, but... yeah. You don't want to. Like, Gyarados is never switched And Emolga. Out. Nope. To resist steel. Emolga's cute. I've drafted Emolga before. What does it do? It was a little bit better than drafting Pachirisu. Nice. Does it get Nuzzle? Uh, I don't remember. I don't think it Probably. does. I mean, if it does, that's its niche. But if not, then it sucks. True. Um, I think there is a lot of good going for the team where it has kind of just traditional roles, right? Where you've got your, your dedicated, dedicated hazard steel type. And you've got, like, you don't really have a bulky water type, but whatever. You have the Arcanine, the, the fire resist for your steel type. You have yeah. um, the, the dedicated sweeper with Gyarados. You have your Mega. It kind of feels similar to, I forget which team it was, but it's kind of just another Gen 7 team. Yeah. Right? Like Actually, I think everything itself. here is Gen 7 or below, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It really, really feels like I don't want to say a relic of the past because it's still fine. <laughs> boomer um, team. Yeah, but it's definitely a, a boomer team, and Carnivore is a boomer. So, <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I mean, good I good point in the chat though. The psychic terrain does remove the bullet punches that this team does not want to deal with. Yeah, so. and Mega Beedrill, I guess, kind of likes that. Yeah, just getting rid of priority in general because it's so for real. Yeah. Getting yep. rid of fake out. Uh, the speed that's is that's actually good, good again. Kind of similar to Shuckle's team, where you have like the 140 plus and then the middle of the road mon that's still very fast. Honestly, Rabombi is still faster than. Yeah, that's like. Yeah, that's it's still, still faster than most of the opponent or most of the teams. Yeah. In, Though I will say that Rabombi, in a, in a kind of similar way to Aleki, not in the same sense because it's not like outspeeding absolutely everything, but you kind of just treat Rabombi as like, a, okay, we have prankster webs. <laughs> it's just yeah. going to outspeed the thing that it comes in in front of, and then that's it. <laughs> well, something that's nice with having something faster is that you can actually just run like max HP, max special attack, quiver dance. Yeah. yeah, if you wanted to. And it's not that bad. I do think it's hard to bring Rabombi and Beedrill to the same game. Yeah, we so don't really have maybe to. that maybe that high speed control is actually pretty fake as well. Because running both of them is like they both die to a stiff freeze. They actually probably die but, to a so not stiff freeze. <laughs> realistically, when are you bringing both of them though? Like, like, why, yeah. would you, why would you want to? Yeah, exactly. Not, not very many cases, right? So maybe the speed is a little fake. Yeah. As opposed to the team that had like the Cinderace, the Coco, yeah. the Boulder, and stuff, where they could all very easily be seen on the same team. I, I don't see these two bringing or being brought rather to the same game very often. Yeah. Um, Amolga is not really speed. So actually, with that in mind, it's actually a lot slower than I had originally thought. I do think Arcanine is going to be a good stopgap for that with extreme speed. And the webs are going to help out a lot too. Yeah. Um, Lele and webs so much, is going to be a demon. Yeah, yeah, Lele with... And Deancy. Deancy. And I guess just... Gyarados, like the those top three with webs are gonna actually be really, really devastating. You know, you know what I'm thinking about though. So I almost would have liked to see a good defog counter on this team because you oh, have yeah? Ferrothorn with like the spikes, and you have webs. Like people are gonna want to bring like good hazard removal for this team. It would have been nice to see like a Defiant Mon. Yeah, or that's true. Like that. Or if Maybe you want a better fairy, you can bring, uh, you bring Wigglytuff. A better spinner than Donfan maybe would help you remove without dropping yours. Yeah, that's true. It this is the it's a kind of team where it's it's almost hard to pick everything apart because it <laughs> looks very like like old time standard. Yeah, and there's nothing like inherently wrong with it. Right. So it all depends actually, on how think, well it does offensively. Yeah, I don't think we really got to our our tierings, but I had this at a seven. I think I think um, I said mine. Because, I eight. because I feel like it, there's like very few ways for this to go wrong, but I also feel like it's very safe, you know, yeah. and it, it's not going to, I don't know. It's hard to say. I think this is just a team where better player wins a lot of the time, Yeah. And but sometimes you just have a Gyarados out. Yeah. So sometimes <laughs> you can beat players who are better than you. 
Um, and you'll rarely lose the players who are worse than you if you just bring standard prep every week. So, and I mean, I think that that's, that deserves more than a passing grade. If you can set yourself up for success, believe in your skills to get you to playoffs, that's, I think, if anything, that's what people should be aiming to do in the bottom division, is not relying on cheese to get through a season on luck and not relying on your opponents not knowing how to play against you. It's just relying on giving yourself tools to show that you're better than the division, and then you can you can start to climb up from there. This is why you should. I think that's especially true. So I sorry, I think that's especially that. true for people who got demoted, and maybe um, I don't want to say are like upset about it, but like are fired up, thinking. Oh, I've been demoted. I've been lacking. I got to prove myself to get back to where I was before. Like, I think that's the kind of person that would need to prove that they actually do belong in in a higher division. Mm -hmm. And this is a perfect team for that kind of mentality. Yeah, I can see that. E All right, next up, we got Snivy. Snivy, I have... Snivy, 429. I have the magic number six. That I six. I had a five and a half. Sure. I said, "Wait, let me look at the team before I say this again." Uh, okay, I said, "Great ladder team might be a little too easy to counter in draft." Also, hello weak to ground types with ice coverage. Yep. Well, to be fair, everything's weak to mammoth swine. There's no, like I'm, I'm very talking more like I'm talking that... more like the Don fans that have ice spinner. I mean, yeah. Like every all of those ground types have ice coverage. Like ice shard, if they have it, ice spinner. And so many things have ice spinner now. It's really like yeah, what I'm thinking about. That's fair. But like ice spinner, like on a mon that you might not like, you're not going to run into ice spinner on every iron treads and great tusk and OU. Yep. But in draft they'll bring it when they know that that's you're only ground swaps are weak to <laughs> they are weak to it. Yeah, there are three steel types, which I don't think is a huge problem necessarily. <laughs> I don't necessarily though like that. Um, they're all kind of how do I put it? I don't know. Bad. Like I would, I would like it if there was one that was like low tier that just happened to be a steel type. Yeah. But all they're three all of these are like important. primary steel type. Yeah. You know where you can get away with Empoleon being your main steel, or Goldengo being your main steel, or Gambit. Uh, maybe less so for Gambit. I would say the other two are like main steels. Gambit is more so a dark type. Yeah. Um. Gambit and, is more so a gambit. Sorry? Gambit is more so a gambit. True. It's just kind of gambit. Type. Yeah. Also, the team is so slow. Noivern is the only mon oh, yeah. above yeah. 95. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. And, Glyce and even then, Glyscore like, is not actually a 95 yeah. mon. Yeah. So. That is right. Yeah. If that you want that. to have any sort of speed control, um, it either has to be Scarf Vish, it's just permanently scarfed, which is like fine. Um, but doesn't it like not even outspeed one thirties or something? I don't remember. It's, There's it's, a speed tier that Scarfish doesn't outspeed. Fake. <laughs> yeah. Um, Noivern has to come to every single battle other than Scarfish, Scarf Gold Angle. Which isn't that bad as a terror cap. I don't, I don't think it's too bad for him to come to every. There game. are webs. Vickable does have webs, and Fergaraf can trick room. Yeah. So there are other speed control options than just the number under your speed stat. But I, I still don't think this is this is really it. It's I think it's less dedicated of a trick room team than Reject Engineers team. But it also has like so it's like less payoff, but also more reliant. <laughs> it's more reliant. Yeah. yeah. So I I feel like it's um maybe my five I'm gonna lower it actually to I I might lower it to four and a half instead of a five or Did whatever I, I had six? before. Yeah, you said six. I, I'm definitely at least a five, I would say. Yeah. I think but. it's just so reliant on Glyscore and Goldengo being bulky. Yeah. I will I can see though Goldengo being nasty plot a lot of the time because it has its steel type um responsibilities covered up by Empoleon. And same as Gambit, I think it'll just be so, Swords Dance every game when it comes. Here's I'm wondering that like if we were to change something on this team. I, I'm, and this is not to say that like Empoleon's bad or that Empoleon's bad with any of these mons, but just looking at it broadly from a type perspective, where you have the other two steel types and you have another water type in Dracovish, is Empoleon the thirteen points that you free up for something else? I I would think so, honestly. 
I think you just let Goldango be the steel type. Because honestly, even when it's just being the fairy ice resist, it still can run plot a lot of the time. Yeah. You're not going to want to run Scarf as often. Um, but I think, yeah, between between Empoleon, I think maybe Claude Sire is kind of unnecessary with Gliscor too. Yeah, that, that's another one. Especially Terra. I, I don't understand the appeal to Terra Claude Sire, <laughs> personally. I think that might have just been a points thing, but you could have honestly been better with Terra Empoleon, I think. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Um, so if Claude Sire, Empoleon, and like Beregaraf, Vikavolt were shuffled up into something fast... I don't hate the Vikavolt for Igarath if you're keeping... No, you know, this, this no, I agree. Core, but... I agree. I just don't... It's the kind of thing that, like, removing the Vikavolt and the Frigarath will remove your mental thought process of, I'm going to run either webs or trick room <laughs> when yeah. they come. Yeah, maybe, well, maybe so I, I don't think they're actually the other, good on this. So you just have the option, but yeah, it's, not, that's fair. it's not, like, the thing they have to run. Yeah, yeah. And you're not choosing I would say get something, modes. <laughs> get something that can boost its speed. Like, a Dragon Dancer, I think, would be very good. Maybe not a specifically a Dragon-type Dragon Dancer, because you have Vish already. Right. Um, uh, Charizard. Maybe, I don't... Okay, so my problem with dropping Empoleon is that then I would try and find a new Water-type still. You need better ice. I was, that's what I was thinking, too. Like maybe like a Vaporeon, honestly. If, Maybe. But, because I just I think it's the it's the fact that it's also steel type that makes it kind of rough. Yeah. Even though the steel type I mean, is so that it's a quad ice resist. Um, though you don't he doesn't even have a fire type you don't on the team. Yeah, I'm saying that I'm I mean, saying that that's I, I think, think that's, that's why cool. he had it because because of the because of the quad resist because of the score. Um, Maybe so like I'm not saying that that's necessarily necessary, but I. Um, Maybe because I I did think of that too, where it's like you don't really want Dracovish to be your only water type, but I also think that without a fire type on this team, a fire type could be useful to help with some of these ice problems. Yeah, very like true. This might this might be like completely untrue, but it's just kind of off the top of my head. I feel like there are more dual ice types that are neutral to steel than there are to that are neutral to fire, but that could be completely wrong. I could just be like biased and be like trying to remember. I'm like, I understand that. I'm trying to like, I think like um, if steel is your offensive answer to ice, I feel like there are more mons, more ice type mons that can handle steel types than fire types defense. Oh, I see what you mean. But I don't know if that's true. Like I'm I'm trying to actually think of examples. I just think fire has been a more consistent, like, like fire is just a better offensive type than steel. Yeah, that's probably, that's probably unless more. you have like a max power gyro ball or heavy slam, like yeah. you're you're better off just clicking flamethrower, right? That's probably why. Or even just like fighting against ice as well. Would yeah, be fighting better. too. Like it, it, in yeah. other words, what I'm saying is that if if you don't you don't have a fighting type or a fire type, and you have a mon that's four times weak to ice, is it necessary? No. Would it help? Yes. Like, you know, so like maybe you're thinking about moving some of this around. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. I think it it definitely could use some trades. Um, I don't think Noivern is consistent enough to be your only speed control. Yeah, I think um, it's good to have on the team, but... Yeah, yeah Vish is going to just be permanently scarfed because of that, though. Yeah. Um, the triple steel is whatever, but probably drop Empoleon for... Uh, I don't know. A different water a type. A different water fire type. type or I like that Claude Sire is a rocker so that Goldengo not having rocks isn't a big deal and Gliscor doesn't have to run it same with king gambit it's like none of them except for empoleon and claude sire ever want to click rocks yeah right so it's kind but of you can also find of that in one of your replacements too yeah you're in it's kind of a tough spot anything. i think um i think it'll it'll just take a few trades but yeah. there's a lot of good mons i mean i think gambit can win games goldengo can win games yeah. Gliscor can win games it's a, it's a good ladder team like these mons are like proven good mons it's just in draft i don't think it has the the cover like the the defensive like self coverage for itself that it, that it needs to to answer what makes these mons worse in draft than they are on ladder yeah maybe with like a terra Gliscor over uh cloud sire and then drop the cloud sire Maybe, but I also feel like Gliscor is similar to Lando, where it's like, do you really want to... Like, this is such a good typing. <laughs> do you really want to drop yeah. the over your Terracaps? I do think Gliscor is different. Or 18 point... It is different, but it's still 18 points dedicated to a Terra Captain that you might not want to Terra in some matchups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. So, that's the other thing. Like, it's Alrighty, not that it'll be let's, bad. Uh, let's move on. Davey! Alright, what did I say for Davey? 
I said this one. I actually didn't talk to him about this one as much. Like we were just kind of like passively yeah. talking about like what our next picks kind of were, but I wasn't really helping cool. as much with this one. Um, um, I like the team. Yeah, I said. I think I, it, it's yeah, hard to go, go wrong with. Okay, sorry. So yeah, okay. Just to start, I I gave him an eight out of ten. Um, I think it's hard to go wrong when you start with Baxcalibur Sloking, well, sorry, yeah. specifically <laughs> yeah. Sloking Galar, and then third pick Iron Valiant is great. Um, and I was thinking the whole time, okay, he's got the Valiant. I'm of the opinion that having something faster than Valiant is nice, so the Valiant doesn't have to be like permanently scarfed all the time is nice. And then he went and picked that Mega Pidgeot down the road too. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's the most consistent mod to bring all the time. Yeah. But um, but I think it's a good addition. Um, Blastoise is one of the better spinners that's flexible. Mm -hmm. It can just be bulky sp spinner pivot. It can be offensive shell smash. It can just be Scald Bot. Whatever. Um, and Terra Thundy? Ooh. Terra Thundy T is a threat. Yeah. And this is another team, too, where similar to Kai Guy's team, it's a really interesting Snow Splash with Baxcalibur that likes the defense boost and a low-tier Terra Captain with Sand Slash Alola. I think yeah. that's, in my book, that's one of the best ways to do a, a Snow Splash. Where you don't need, um, you're not reliant on the snow at all, but in but some matchups, it's just, it's just a winning matchup. Yeah. Yeah. What did you yeah, think? I agree with that. Uh, I said, well, I said six. I actually think it's a little better than six. Um, oh. My initial thought was, and this is also because I didn't notice some of the stuff. Um, like I, I didn't really notice the Fundy. Uh, the, the Terra Captain highlight. There's, I'm just missing them when I'm glancing at these teams. <laughs> like, right. uh, and okay, so I said, I said could be nasty with the right with the right setup uh, and very flexible. Might be a little weak to some fairy spam and overly reliant on Glow King who still needs to set snow. That's the wording that I used. Um, mm -hmm. So this team. I guess like Klefki answers the fairy spam too. Like I mean, Sand Slash isn't going to be your fairy swap. Klefki doesn't have the reliable recovery. It can come in on fairy type stuff, so maybe, so maybe that's not entirely true. But you look at like weak to fairy, weak to fairy, weak to fairy, neutral to fairy. This is your resist. Okay, are you running AV? No, because you have to set your snow a lot of the time. Okay, no real recovery outside of regenerator. Like it's just it, I would worry that you it might get pressured by some of that kind of like That's even fair. if it's just like bulky offense going yeah. into it because looking think... is it's it's similar to the scream tail issue where it's like if you're too reliant on this on this one mon that has like a really good typing for a lot of really good things but it also is responsible for setting up the team to win you might end up in some sticky situations now klefki does help that a little bit i didn't, I didn't notice the klefki i think when i wrote that originally. Yeah. but i think that um if there is going to be one mon in the game that I want to be like the centerpiece of my defensive core, it's going to be Sloking Galar. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Just because of how flexible it is, like defensively, its type is amazing. It pivots. Yeah. It has so many item like items to use for its item slot, and it's just never passive, based yeah. on its like its base offensive stats and the base power of its moves. Um, I think it's yeah. one of the most consistent mons to be in that position but no mon ever wants to be in that position yeah so i, I agree i agree with, where, I agree with what you're saying too yeah and it's i'm, I'm more specifically talking about like the move slots and stuff and, and, and yeah. just uh and because you want it to be the initiator for a lot of the stuff that you it might limit matchups where av looks good but also slush rush looks good or like but also this looks good and, and you might get end up end up getting shoehorned and not have it when you need it for something else yeah but so I, I actually I think six was a little harsh. I, 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 I didn't really look at this one too hard because I know I had talked to him about it a little bit, and so I was like kind of like oh, I, I kind of know what's on his team. But then yeah. but yeah after after talking about it a little bit like it's a lot better than than I, than I thought because I mean again we have a couple of game winners here just like it's just yeah yeah and, honestly and Terra, Terra Thundy, Thundy is so T, good yeah what's and, crazy and, too is you can even run the um you can run the weather ball like Terra you don't have to yeah. even beat Terra Ice yeah right to have yeah. ice coverage. You could just be Terra flying and just be Zapdos now. <laughs> yeah. With like T Bolt flying Terra Blast and Weather Ball. Yeah. Um Valiant is really nice at closing the gap, sort of bridging between your 
your physical and special split mm -hmm. where like something so dedicated to physical like backs and then so dedicated to high special like Bundy. Um, so Valiant is a really nice in between where you can be physical or special. Right. Um, Pidgeot, I do think is hard to bring sometimes, but in matchups that it's good, it's pretty good. Yeah. Honestly, all things considered. Maybe and a Crook little is... concerned with the with the hazard control for Pidgeot, though. Yeah, that's true. That's true. The only you, removal you being Blastoise and Klefki. Yeah. And Sandslash, I guess. And I technically yeah. Thundee. Yeah, I don't think Sandslash or Thundee really wants to be doing that. Yeah. Um, Might so be yeah, a little I, really reliant on, I could on see that. Blastoise for that. Cause especially because, like, yeah. you know, Klefki trying to fit Defog if it's also running screens or whatever. It's like, okay, what else are you running? Like, your one yeah. attacking move or are you screens going completely or, passive? Like, spikes or T-Wave or yeah. a lot of the things you're not doing. Yep. Yeah. And then Blastoise is like, okay, cool. That's your option. Yeah, so that is fair. I do think Blastoise will be shoehorned into being <clears throat> the spinner a lot of the time. Yeah. But it's not. I don't think it's the end of the world. No. There's a lot of... Um, I it's think just, a, lot it's of just a point the against the Pidgeot where it's like, yeah. if... You, if you're concerned about the hazard for Pidgeot and you have to bring Blastoise, okay, there's 12 points and 10 points. Who's not coming? Yep. Right. <laughs> like, so. Yep. I agree. So to be fair, yeah. at that point, you could still just run Bax, Sloking, Valiant, Blastoise, Thundee, Pidgeot. So I guess could. what I'm not saying it's question, impossible. It would just be not not bringing Crook. Yeah. Okay. I think for the most right? part, it, <laughs> the team will be switching around between. Klefki, Crocodile, and Pidgeot. And I think the top five yeah. are pretty pretty solidified into yeah. well, coming so almost every game. Least. There are some games where Valiant might not be good or where Bax might not be good. And maybe we'll see like Crook and Clef in those games. Yeah. Or a Sans or sorry, a Snow Splash. Right. Yeah. That's my thoughts. I I think it's pretty good, actually. It's very flexible. So yeah. eight out of ten for me still. So. Alright, we got one more. It is crab. Last one. We got and our friend Crabbit. For a little bit of context, sharp just as as planned. Yeah, yeah. For a little bit of context before we get into Crabbit, we did. Crabbit did take over for daily mood swing, um, and I believe had like six picks to make up for yeah. in a row, and then made some grace trades as well. Um, so, yes, you are looking at it correctly. There is a Corsola Galar and a Cursula. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, give this one? I, I okay. I rated this as the lowest team in the division personally. I, I said I said three. I have a three as well. Okay. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of problems. It's the team is so static and so very stationary. Where the the I'm only pivot is what uh, Volt Switch Zerk U Turn Volcarona. That's kind of it. Yeah. Maybe there's a baton passer here or there, but I'm not sure. Um, the hazard game is either you're running Rocks Necrozma or you're running Rocks Cursula slash Corsula. Uh, again, not necessarily the position you want to be in. <laughs> um, only 10 out of 25 tarot points are used with Vile Plume and Regice. Um, funny enough, there's two grass types and neither of them resist ground. <laughs> Nice. Um, Carton is actually okay into physical. Hey, and a types. bug type that doesn't resist ground. Oh, true. Yeah. Yeah, there's not a single ground immunity or resist. Um, I do think Necrozma, Zygarde, Volcarona, and Cartana, and Altaria, and Zerkatree. Like, on, there's there's a lot of individual <laughs> individually threatening pieces, right? And honestly, even Suicune with Combine. Like, uh, and Vileplume. Do there. not understand. And Vileplume, and Corsola, and Reg... <laughs> um, and honestly, the, the Terra Captains that Krabbit has are actually okay. I do think Terra Regice is legit. I do think Terra Vileplume is legit. But, but there's put it so many better one. options. <laughs> no. Yeah, so many better options. It's just that most of the top tiers that this team has are all Terra banned. I think yeah. what Zerkatree is the first Mon that's allowed to Terra on this list. But do it. Do it with the Reg Ice. That's better do than... Do it with the, the Vile Plume, honestly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you could do that. You could do, that do it with the Suicune if you want it. I don't think that's yeah. amazing, but there's also three points left over. There's definitely room for improvements. You could put both of the... Go okay. I think Cursula is kind of just Krabbit's, like, pet mon. Like, the Corsola Galar line is, like, their pet line, and I'm totally fine with that. Um... 
don't have a problem with it. I think there are better water types that you could have had here than Suicune that could pivot around and try and be like a centerpiece of a defensive core. But no, not like regular core. But. <laughs> but like if it was the Milotic or Vaporeon, or I think a lot of these mods are taken, but the the Slow King, the the things like that, right? Where it can come and pivot out and let the offensive mods do offensive things. Suicune is a defensive mod that either it does Suicune things until it dies, or switches out into an offensive mon and lets that thing take 40% on a resisted move. Like, it's not it's not the, the greatest situation to find yourself in. Yeah. But everything has great setup options, right? Necrozma, Zygarde, Volk, like, uh, the same list that I said before, can all completely 6-0 teams. But the likelihood of that happening, I think, is very low. Yeah. Um, because they're all very telegraphed. It just comes down to can well, the opponent prep for it. Necrozma is telegraph, but the others are. Yeah, okay. Necrozma is right. Is the most flexible, I think. And yeah. Altaria. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, it just didn't have very much going for me. The speed was also what's the the fastest mine is Kartana. There's no other speed control. Um, the hazards are bad. The hazard removal with Volcarona is um, Volcarona. <laughs> Nice. And Kartana, I guess, sorry. And Altaria. But, like, Altaria can't run boots either. I think there's just a lot of problems. But I also feel like there's a lot of mons that Kravit likes here. Yeah. So, hard to criticize too much. That's my two cents. I think we mostly agreed. Assuming that since we had the same rating of 3 out of 10, I think we agree on a lot of what I've said. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts that I haven't said? Uh, the only other note that I said was nothing to help Volcarona or, or Necrozma set up. So, like, there's not really a good screen setter here. Yeah. There's True. not, um, no, like, webs or anything. Not, not that that's helping them set up, but, like, like there's no real good pivots, yeah. which we did talk about. Um, that, yeah, so it, it, does, it doesn't really facilitate the, the mods that want to come in and set up. Yeah, exactly. So, it's kind of just, like, when you, um... I don't know, when you're like a kid playing soccer and you don't like have soccer practice, you just kinda go out and you play games. Yeah. It's kinda like this the Kravitz team are the kids that are being sent out onto the field, being like, Okay, good luck. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, go get them. I hope you score a goal. Maybe you'll win a game. Yep. You know, that's kinda how it feels to me. And you're the coach. Yeah. <laughs> um I think that pretty much wraps up the Truant Division, though, yeah? That wraps it up. Um, so I guess we can... Have you been just... tracking what we've been rating things? No. I have mine. No, right neither now. have I. That's okay. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> maybe an avid NBA fan will, will go over the, the yeah. VOD and track what we what we rated these uh, the teams. I do have a separate doc for myself that I'm writing up that I'm mostly done, and I'll probably have out either maybe tonight or tomorrow. That is kind of reiterating some things that I've said. It goes a little bit more in depth, goes into like more pros and cons about what I think um, is good and bad about each team. Mm -hmm. um, that you might want to take a read of. I'll post it when I'm finished. Take a read to check out what I think of your team. Um, yeah. Any final any final thoughts? No, no. I just brought up the the stats here just to eyeball it a little bit. Yeah. Cool. If, if anyone wants to see that but chuckle having the highest defense is uh <laughs> is I good where we're kravitz or these are coming from. that's actually kind of crazy that it's higher than reject um rejects defense that i thought their defense was like really high Let's see. with the stack attacker and stuff yeah oh I let's mean, see yeah treads he has, he has the treads arg. The Sableye. Mew, the hundreds. Yeah, he got a lot too. It'll yeah, go down, I guess, after the guard trade. But, um, oh, yeah, that's Brim now, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'll update that in a moment. I'm just going to get caught up with the uh, oh, Discord. The, yeah, the special attack. It, it's a Zerka tree that's dragging that up. And then, like, it's, I mean, not, not not that these are bad, but that's that makes sense why he has the most special attack. Who is the most special defense? The Red Jones. All right, you figure that out on your own. Um, yeah. <laughs> I guess we'll say bye. Bye to everybody else. Yeah. Thanks for see. tuning in, guys. We'll post the VOD shortly it. and um, see you tomorrow for our swarm reviews. Swarm reviews. And maybe we'll set a timer this time. Yeah. <laughs>